But I think it's changed. I think everybody's relationship based now. Back then it wasn't. Yeah. And when I say I got killed, they used to write shit about me and Strahan, like making fun of us. They used to write it. They used to call you and, and Oh, man, it was fucking, oh, they were not that, but it was just. No, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, well, what do you got to bring? <laughs> Yeah, relate because we get that. The way you said it, your uh, voice got. Oh, yeah. no, we don't. We, we, your we, voice went. All right, right, all right. I wrote the piece. Oh, I wrote that piece. <laughs> I wrote that piece. <laughs> like you look, he just he looks. It didn't pick up steam. <laughs> I was hoping to. <laughs> he looks ridiculous. Talk about you guys. Oh. Talk about you guys being. <laughs> yeah. Talk about you guys making out. What would you look like naked? Talk about his nine inch. That's weird, man. No, I wrote that. I think I read that story. Yeah, I read that piece. Yes, we did. Cause we back at it again. It's the fight or in the kid. This is really the fight or in the kid. Jay Glazer, that was quiet. <laughs> Jay Glazer in the house, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while. What's Lots happening. happening. How you, you, doing? Look, you look good, young man. I look fantastic. You're three Thank years you younger than me. Thank Congratulations. You. I haven't seen you since when? I think, you know when? I think. 74? It was 1974. <laughs> it was in, in 12th grade. Yeah. Right. It, was, it was the Three Mile Island meltdown. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's been a while, dude. Five do years. You know, no, do you know where? Nowhere. You don't remember? No. So we set up this fucking crazy, crazy, crazy lunch at Stallone's house. I bring Guy Fieri to fucking cook. Dude. And, right? Yep, right, right. Yes. We kind of broke the internet there. You know about this shit? You would, and Frank Grillo was there? Grillo was over there. Was there. Michael Strahan. Sugar Ray. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll tell you right. real quick. Sorry. So Stallone says, hey, uh, I just got a $25,000 grill. I'm going to get a grill master to come over and teach me how to do it. I said, why the fuck would you do that once you get Guy Fieri? He goes, really? You think you do that? I'm like, yeah, dude, you're Rocky. So he goes, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He so doesn't he know guy, how famous he is. He has no idea, yeah. right? And Guy's a good friend of mine. So one day, a uh, couple weeks later, there's a fight going on. It's uh, Anthony Joshua against Ruiz, yeah. right? And uh, Stallone calls and he goes, any chance your friend Guy in town, uh, do you want to come over and watch the fight? And I'm going to do it again. Uh, yeah, dude, you're Rocky. Yeah, yeah. So I said, yeah, actually, we're going out to dinner tonight. We're having a dinner. It's like a crazy little dinner. It's me, Guy, Mike McCarthy, and, and Strahan, and... And uh, this girl, Ava Knight, who's fighting for us, right? So I said, yeah, he's coming over tonight. He goes, well, here's the deal. Any chance you could bring him? Because my daughters really don't care about Rocky or Rambo, but they love diners, drivers, and dives. <laughs> Any chance you could bring him? I said, let me find out. So I called up Guy. I said, tell me you love me. He said, why do I love you? And I said, man, you know, Stallone wants to know if you want to come watch a boxing match. His outs. And, and his daughter's like, man, they're huge Triple D fans. Yeah. He goes, well, let me, let me call my wife first and see if I can do it because I'm supposed to go home tonight. He calls his wife, Lori, and Lori says, well, let, me, let me get this straight. Glazer's asking you to go to Stallone's house to watch a boxing match, and you're asking me if you... Yeah, yeah, get, you like, better do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you come home, yeah. she goes, you're a fucking idiot yeah, if you come home. There. So he calls back, he goes, all right, tell Stallone, and I know we just went fast in this, sorry. No, let's do it. That's the no, ADD I love this. He said, uh, all right, tell Sly, I'm in, and I'm going to make starters my sous chefs. So well, that's cool. find out who's coming and I'm going to bring, I'm going to have the food network, like load me up. I'm going I'm to cook and it's going to be incredible. So I said, great. I called Stallone. I said, tell him you love me. He goes, well, I love you. I said, not only is guy coming, he's going to bring all his food and he's going to make your daughters a sous chef. And he goes, really? He didn't have to do that. I'm just going to get cold cuts. Dude. I said, bro, you're not getting fucking cold cuts. Right? Old flavor town. Cold cuts, right? And we're going old school fucking Jersey here. Here we go. Cold cuts. Cold cuts. I haven't heard cold cuts since I grew up in Jersey, right? Cold cuts. It's not going cold cuts. So he goes, no, I said, bro, we're not doing fucking cold cuts. Like, tell me what the guest list is. He goes, all right, who are you bringing? I said, I'm going to bring a guy in Strahan. And because Strahan's taking me, he's my baby sister. And, you know, he's taking me fucking everywhere. Yeah. Since he's become a king of daytime TV. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm like, I gotta, I gotta repay him. He takes me to, like the Vanity Fair Oscars party and this and that. I gotta repay him. So uh, I said, so I'm bringing Strahan and Guy. I said, who are you bringing? He goes, okay, so guest list is uh, you, Strahan, Guy, me, Pacino, Schwarzenegger, <laughs> Sugar Ray Leonard. I go, <laughs> get the fuck for- out of here. He goes, what? And These are my friends. Those are your friends. Don't forget right? David, David Blaine came and he did. He shows up and does magic. He did magic. He did doing magic bro, in the kitchen. Wait, we broke the I, fucking I'm internet. I'm still confused how Cowan got into this part. Not because I don't know. How did you get it? Nobody <laughs> said. His daughters. <laughs> nobody said so, Cowan. Did. Because his daughters. <laughs> Who are you bringing? Bacino, <laughs> Schwarzenegger, no, no, no. Terminator, Cowan, the Godfather. His, Rocky he got Cowan serving drinks. Yeah, well, it's because his daughter, his daughters are comedy fans. 
So they, they, we all were hanging out after the show and they came up to me and they were like, you were really funny. Well, remember they did talking. a podcast out of the, the studio. Yes, they did. Yeah. But okay. this was before that. I didn't know that. They were just really nice. And they said, you love my dad. And I go, you know, he's, you know, Sebastian. Yeah. And I go, yeah. fucking, yeah, I do. I love Everyone him. Everyone loves you, But I get to that, I get to that party <laughs> and I walk in the kitchen. Now I'd been to Stallone's house two times before that for fights and stuff. So right. this was my third time. Right, right. And so I get there and I walk in and Guy Fieri, is in there yeah. and the way, and he it was nice because he knew me whatever he was like hey you know blah, blah, blah. and then he goes before he even says anything he goes you got to try this try this yeah. and he puts a piece of like meat in my mouth yeah with I truffle and oh, oh dude he went really so but he is guy like it's not just like for show he's a good I dude fucking cook. Oh, no, he can he's, cook. he's, he's, he's a great guy good guy down to earth guy, guy man guy. he's incredible yeah. great guy. I, Got a bunch of plays with them. Great guy. It's like a traveling party. What you see is what you get. Yeah. He's now, authentic. Now, by the way, by the way, party. Did you guys have a contest? Who's back the worst? Uh, it would be Stallone over me. Stallone, but Stallone, Stallone. He I saw Stallone up. at the studio. Yeah. I'm like, bro. But by it was the like way, a rock. Yeah. that day he was. Uh, we're there, and he goes, "Hey, uh, you think it'll be okay if I post this on social media?" I'm like. Yeah, dude, you're Rocky. Yeah, did like, you do what the fuck you want to switch? Tag. Wait, yes. wait, wait, wait. Yes. I got it. I got it. I got it. And we broke the internet. It was yes. a Saturday. Uh, you, a Saturday. And everybody in the NFL is calling like, "What the fuck is going on? Yeah. What are you doing?" Like, that's the day I usually get on my scoop for Sunday. Yeah. You know? I was. I'm standing in a circle, and it's Pacino, <laughs> yep. Schwarzenegger. Uh, Stallone and uh, Sugar Ray Leonard right. and and me. Right. Now wait, now, hold on. now no wait, wait, wait. As I'm <laughs> they misspelled there, your name. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. Now here's the best. Oh, yeah, part. yeah. Oh, Frank Stallone was spelled And Grillo's yeah. there and Joe Carnan. Yeah. Now, now here's a, the the best part. Um, uh, Bill Burr walks by me as as I'm listening to these guys. He's got a cigar in his mouth and he goes, "Hey." You've been here an hour already. Get over it. <laughs> I was like, I'm not over it, dude. That was a great oh, day. Fucking fantastic. Oh, the best part was this, Jay. Um, as so, see how Frank and 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 um, Joe Carnahan, director, uh, and there's yeah, Dalia, and there's uh, there's Schwarzenegger. So I'm there. I'm sitting with right next to Dalia, and uh, and when the fight's on, Sugar Ray Leonard, yeah. the great Sugar yeah. Ray Leonard, is right here, and Grillo he, he, and Carnahan like, yeah. are criticizing. Anthony Joshua's boxing. Ugh. And I was like, please don't do this. Yeah. Don't do this and in the earshot. And Sugar Ray, you know what Sugar Ray He's cool. doing, giving color. Oh, yeah, he's doing he was color so commentary quiet. and he was great. He was, yeah. everybody there was, he was gave me a, did not tell them to shoot. No, 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 the he didn't, up. but he gave me a boxing lesson. You yeah, would have been more annoyed great. than anybody. Oh, no, I and can't it's go on video. Things. It's on video where he was showing me how to go to the body because I said, you know, whenever I go this way, I get punched in the face. I don't know how to dig to the liver. And he goes, and he starts giving me a lesson. And Stallone says to my girlfriend, what are you doing? Get this on videotape. It's in my career. And then Stallone gets himself yeah. in the middle as I'm getting a lesson. It was yeah. fucking hilarious. He's awesome. Sly is the fucking best. The best. Oh, he's come right. train with us for a while and he was just, he was in strands here one day and he was just like, you're you're selling your immaturity at Unbreakable. That's all you're doing. You guys just act like a bunch of fuck sticks. I'm like, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. No doubt. Right. So he was coming hurt? in and training. Yeah, it's with you great. Guys? Great yeah. gym. Oh, yeah. wow. Does Strahan yeah. train? I'd love to see what he can do. Yeah, Michael trains constantly. Yeah. No, you ever. Shit. Does he's he not train? No, I'm saying it's, it's not, fighting. No, not in fighting. Okay. No. Yeah. No. no, his body's no. stupid. No, he's really no. Yeah. No. He's, 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 uh, he's addicted. Yeah. yeah. Well, if I was built. And then, well, also, like, in his career, he was like 272 and then. Fuck, I think it was year 10 or something. He's like, all right, if I want longevity, I got to lose a bunch of weight. And that we don't need to show him shirt. Like, Put your sock. <laughs> I just and he, uh, he went down to two, like 248. In, in between like 248, by the way. That's how big he is. Yeah. That, that's trim for him, 248. Well, from 272, but he's like, but I need longevity size, in my career. That's yeah. like you yeah. gotten to 160. <sighs> like at his size, that's yeah. pretty standard. Yeah. All right, B, let's take a little break from town with our boy Jay Glazer because, like, every nuts. episode lately, can we, let's get nuts. Let's get nuts. I get a little Speaking nuts. Speaking of mental health, I'm nuts. I'm a little nuts, too. But I think you might be talking about macadamia. Oh, I love me. It's my favorite nut. Well, it is It is my favorite nut. In fact, a couple nut boys. I'm literally eating the chocolate dipped uh, macadamia nuts. Um, I mean, that's all we eat snack on here at studio. Well, they're the, the best. They are. They are the most. They they have omega sevens and, and macadamias are linked to collagen producing and reducing inflammation, which are key parts of longevity. And world rep record epigenetic age reducer Brian Johnson includes macadamias in his daily blueprint diet. But you would think a bag of them macadamia nuts cost you two, three million dollars. They're the most expensive. Why, how they, how does the house of macadamias okay. make it so? This is a good question. Friendly. They are the most consumers. expensive nut. 
That's a fact. Always have been. Always been a crazy delicacy. Nut for the rich. The best. Nut, they're the nuts for the rich. Not anymore, by the way. House of Macadamia is working, works with 96 South African farmers that makes them more accessible. Okay. It's farmer owned and uh, they can always guarantee the best quality and yes. the best prices. And House of Macadamia has a wide range of products from oh, yeah. wide with range. no added sugar or artificial ingredients. Not we love We love the chocolate covered nuts. And listen, they don't do a lot of cool giveaways, but for the Fire and Kid listeners, my God, did they hook you up. All right. They're going to give you guys some sea salted macadamia nuts right now. All right. Instead of the extra virgin yes, macadamia wait. oil. They're, the Nam- they're from the Namibian Sea. Oh. The Namibian Sea. Okay. Wherever I don't that's know what that at. means, but Namibia is is look up where the namibia sea is salt lakes in a bay of Nib- Nib- nibia yeah dude come oh. on. the sea from the namibia from the namibia N- sea Namibias? dude try to say D- namibia. T- it's the sea of it's the Nam- Nam- namibia wait it's like is this name bibi hey, but how's Namibian the back there sea? just say salted nuts no dude when it's namibia sea nuts that's a whole is that different salt level from of salt. Namibia? E, well, it's from Narnia? the Namibia Sea. No, you know, it's salt from Narnia. May as well be. Yeah. Do you know where the Namibia Sea is? Of course. Of course not, but. No, but, I do. I do. No, me too. No, I mean, show me a map. It's, it's in over Africa there. somewhere. It may be. Right? Yeah. All right. Instead of the extra virgin macadamia oil, they're going to give you an entire box of these macadamia nuts. Worth 35 bucks. They're worth 35 first, bucks. With your first purchase. For free. Go to houseofmacadamias.com slash T-F-A-K. You get 20% off your whole order, whether it's the dip macadamias, the salt. The salted, the bars, whatever, you're going to get 35 bucks worth. It's a free box. And the only ingredient other than macadamia nut, just so you know, is the salt from the beautiful salt lakes in the Bay of Namibia. House of macadamia. Just say salted macadamia nuts though for me next time, right? Nope. Say. Narnia salt. Because I will not eat it unless it, the salt comes from Namibia. Do you know where it's at? <laughs> Chin, where's Namibia? Look up Namibia. Now, maybe it's in the South Africa. Is House of Africa. Back Davis making this salt it's in, up? It's in South Africa. It's what, Just say what fancy South. salt. Yeah, there it is. It's a country in Southwest oh, it Africa. it borders the Atlantic Ocean. There That's where go. they're getting their salt from. Uh, I don't even know if... Oh, they have a significant cheetah population. Oh, that's <laughs> a fun. Yeah. Ooh, salt from cheetah. From cheetah, cheetah sweat they get it salt. From the, they get it from the, the cheetah, cheetah sweat paws. Salt. Cheetah paws. Say that yeah. 10 times. Cheetah sweat salt. Anyway, go salt. to sweat House salt. of Macadamia's... Dot com slash T F A K for twenty percent off your whole Ow. order. Plus, you get the cool salted macadamia nuts. Yeah. But he, but he also it, the life he, that he's in now. You know, being on those Good Morning America or the hell show he's yeah. on. Those he's so big. So him cutting down two forty seems like once you're in that yeah, yeah, yeah. business, you want to get slimmer, man. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's I'm yeah, with it's, him. It's a longevity thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gone the other way. Yeah, and then with with uh you you were talking about on saturdays usually when you get the scoops with nfl it's it's all week long but saturday is when i like big time i fill in every team that i haven't called yet and it's all day all night doesn't stop it's ruin every relationship i've ever had besides the current one it just it doesn't stop and how hectic was the draft for you that just went on is that is Uh, that a hectic that i love no that i love so here's the thing with the draft i'm the only reporter who doesn't do a mock draft because I'm not going to lie to the fans. I hate mock drafts. It's, well, there's, first of all, they're stupid because no one sets their board until the week of. So when people are telling you three weeks out what a team's doing, they're like, they have no clue. The, the team doesn't even know. They don't yeah. have their board set. No. Yeah. Right? They, didn't, they haven't fis- finished their visits, all that. So And things change. Like there was, there was a time, I'll never forget, Cowboys call me on something. They're going to draft Sean Merriman. They were set to draft him. Man, they've done, you know, 364 days of work leading up to this. And the morning of, they called and said, yeah, we think we're changing our minds. I said, what are you doing? They said, yeah, I th- think we're going to shift off him and go to DeMarcus Ware. I said, what happened? He said, nah, just some conversations we had last night. Last night! Last night! And they shifted off Merriman the morning of and went to DeMarcus Ware. And, uh, did you start as a reporter, history. Jay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Back So, man, people don't really know the craziness of my story. I was the first minute-by-minute minute breaking news guy in the country when that internet thing came out, which I think is going to take off. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's something to and it. I think there's something yeah. to it. Wow. Um, but my first, it's actually crazy. My first, um, took me 11 years. My first 11 years of my career, I was making uh, 9450 bucks a year. God. Living in New York City. And How'd you survive? It, well, that we talk about Strahan. He's the first guy I met at Giants uh, practice I became friends with. 
and I didn't have enough money. I was living in New York City, and I didn't have enough money to go take a subway to a bus to Giant Stadium and back each day. So he drove me back into New York City. He didn't even live in the city. Every single day for seven years. What Damn. a great guy. Incredible. I own like 28 grand in Lincoln Tunnel Fair. What a great yeah. guy. <laughs> and then, and then, but the other thing is like I walked in that giant locker room day one. And I was like, man, I don't have the same experience as everybody else. I don't have the same um, education as everybody else. I don't have any of this stuff. But man, how could I be different? So if these guys work... Nine to five, I'm not going to outwork him by a little, I'm going to outwork him by a lot. I will be the last motherfucker standing here every single fucking day. I'll be the last fucking dude standing here because also I had to wait for Stray and to drive me home. Yeah. But, <laughs> right, so but you had no we, choice. Work out work, no, no, no. Working as right. a reporter. Right. So right. I'd sit there, right. man, and just build. But the other right. thing I, I was trying to do is I'm like, how could I be different than all the other guys? I felt way back then everybody used their pen as a weapon. I was like, well, I'm going to start relationships with people. And I actually got crushed for it for a while that i wasn't objective because i was starting relationships you thought you were biased I, yeah and i had more in common with players and coaches than i did my, those other newspaper paper That's reporters so of course right so you love the athletes you love the process yeah, but also i was training back then i was yeah. like i was you know so um over time though man like i was rejected more than any human being you'd ever meet in your entire fucking life it was fucking horrible and people think that that overnight success happens overnight Duh. it happens over 11 years especially you guys know in that, the right? NFL right? especially yeah. in the NFL in anything entertainment, any, any job you want any any dream you have it's not going to take overnight that's full of shit so man I just kept going kept getting rejected kept trying to get every job I possibly could and just kept getting rejected and rejected but I cut you know my name kept growing more and more as man you could trust this guy this mm. guy's the most trusted guy in the, all these locker rooms. You can really trust him. These players and coaches. And finally, man, 11 years in, I, I get this call from, it, I'd been rejected by every agent until finally this guy, Maury Gostran, was like, all right, this guy's, all right. And I took every free job you could. I was on New York One TV for doing an hour show every week for 450 bucks a year. Damn. Fucking and you year. were writing, right? And I was writing, and I finally, I got a gig for the New York Post for 250 bucks a story. Damn. So that was the nine grand. Yeah. And then, and I couldn't go get other jobs because I had to outwork everybody. So it's like I, early on, I was like boxing and bouncing and bartending and I tried stand up comedy. It's all this, anything I could, but eventually I had to put all my time into this. So literally, like, man, I'd be the first one there and then I'd be there till seven o'clock at night or whatever. And everybody else left the Just floor. interviewing guys, just Interview there. And it's starting relationships. So yeah. guys leave, they leave the locker room, man, I'd sit and talk to him. Yeah, it was the key to Jay because he, he's a relationship guy. Yeah. So yeah. they can trust him. Yeah. They know he's not going to out them like yeah. they might give them private information yeah, there's always Jay, a, there's always yeah. a, the, an always adversarial a thing guy. right between yeah. reporters it used and to be yeah, athletes. yeah and now it's all relationships it's the only way it happens it's all yeah. relationship it's based. Totally make it but right. also it's so cutthroat what he does like that don't feel like the breaking news like yeah. jay breaks a lot of news because guys like him oh. yeah. then there's the guys on the business the side like adam Sha schaefer and those other guys him. yeah he's good adam's good but too, it's but super cut we've all yeah it's super, it, like yeah. between yeah the guys that break the news bro so it the guys is, yeah. the business guys don't like you but the athletes do yeah yeah okay. yeah no no it's, we're all good now because again i was man i've been doing it now since 99 yeah is when i got I'm undeniable like, at this. well 93 how'd you get into sports where you just like you played football in high school or something um i wrestled in high school and then i um where, where'd you go, where'd you go? I, I got an internship where in jersey family. did you grow up uh jersey sure good wrestling in jersey yeah right? great great wrestling yeah. I don't like to. I used to like guys to say, in Jersey. I used to like to say outside New York City. Yeah, so, or just say Jersey. I'll tell you, maybe <laughs> just for hey, sure. Huh? Real, real, real sports. Brian Gumbel did this feature on me one year. Is hey, this guy's, and this is when the insider business really blew up, right? And it was like, hey, this guy's crazy good at his job because he's crazy. And they call my high school principal or whatever, and and they said, hey, can we get some high school yearbook photos of Jay Glazer and wrestling photos? And the guy said, who? <laughs> said uh, Jay Glazer, and they said, who? They said, you know, you have a guy who's on national TV who went to your high school. And they said, yeah, we know, Mike Sorrentino, the situation. Had no fucking idea who I was, clue. but knew the situation. Oh, my God. God. I was like, that is fantastic. Oh, so I never have to good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Have to donate. So, wow. So, yeah, people don't realize the, the backstory of it. And then, um, you know, when the, again, when the internet thing came out, when I realized, man, we don't have to wait for the back page anymore, um, I got a gig at CBSSportsLine.com. And it was me versus a guy named Len Pascarelli and John Clayton and Chris Mortensen for like minute by minute breaking news. And that that kind of really, you know, Those some shifted boys, everything. Man. Yeah, that was every that changed Those everything. And then boys. I kept picking fights with ESPN back then and um and it just 
became this huge thing, which it is now. And over is time, because you were on the side of the truth, though. You were always telling the truth. You're trying to get to the. Yeah, I was different. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was different. I was different too, and I was always fucking with them and trying to pick fights because. And you also weren't like clickbaity. You weren't screwing. No, no, it no, wasn't no, like no, it was no. never like no. like I, a lot of the journalists, especially yeah. back then, were like snaky about it. Or they do a story like you know whatever yeah. a guy has some altercation outside of the right. field. Right. But I think it's changed. I think everybody's relationship based now. Back then it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. And when I say I got killed, they used to write shit about me and Strahan, like making fun of us. They used to write it. They used to call you and, gay and stuff. Oh, man, it was fucking, no, they were, not that, but it was just. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, no, hold, that, on. No, hold on. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Hey, well, what do you got to bring well, to the game? I was trying to relate because we get that. And the way you said it, your well, voice got, Strahan, yeah, yeah, no, we don't. We, we, your we, voice went, all right, right, all right I wrote the piece. Yeah, I wrote that piece. I wrote that piece. Like, you look, he just, he looks at Jagger. didn't pick up steam. I was hoping to. He looks at Jagger. Talk about you guys getting gay. Talk about you guys being gay. Talk about you guys making out. What do you look like naked? Talk about his nine inch hog. That's weird, man. Yeah, yeah. I no, I wrote that. I think piece. I read that story. Yeah, I read yeah, that yeah. piece. Yeah, but it was, it was, um, man, again, it was just, it was, it was fucking brutal and miserable for all those years. And then you know, one day, my agent calls and says, "Hey, I was on a driving range with Tiki Barber, and uh, he said, you know, where are you at?" I said, "Hey, I'm Tiki." He said, "All right." He said, "You can finally exhale." Again, I got eleven years out full time job, and he, I said, "What's up?" He said, "We finally got you a full time job." I said. Oh, thank you, my best friend, God Almighty in heaven. Thank you, God. And he, I said, uh, with who? He said, CBS Sports. They just got the NFL back. I said, I'll take it. He said, don't you want to know how much it's for? I said, I don't give a fuck because I validated and myself. And worth this. Yeah, and, but when I walked in that giant locker room day one, I said, I'll be fucking different than everybody else, and I'll be the last dude standing. It validated me for what I yeah. set out to do. Correct. And it was for 50 Correct. grand. And I was fucking huge yeah it was man. i still kind of get a little choked survive? up because that was my moment how the fuck did you survive 11 years with i no saw money? my body a lot yes <laughs> yeah. did a lot of private Clear, dancing yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, was strahan a guy who always as he was an all pro as great as he was i think he played 11 years no, no, was more he, than that, 15, more than that think about how long that is was but he also, a guy people don't remember first four he wasn't he, he wasn't he, the guy he, he, he no, wasn't they the almost cut him they almost moved his position and this is like brendan knows i've trained football players for years in, yeah. in mixed martial arts and a lot of it was from him it's like i think it was deacon jones and howie long had to talk with him and said hey you don't play football you fight and that game starts and you fucking cage door locks you better make that guy across from you beg to get off that field wow. with you and that click with michael and he went out the next year got 15 sacks oh, never looked back is that right yeah he just he just said oh, okay it's uh, a fight he turned into a because, fight be, so but did he always have uh, show business or something yeah. on his mind because Tiki Barber did, but it didn't yeah. quite, you know, that didn't work. He out should be the blueprint for all athletes. Like what he's doing is higher level than any Hard any athlete's that. ever done. And, and here's the other thing people don't know about him. Like we we're both trying to work on our crafts. Him too. He and I would do appearances at like we would do like synagogues in Long Island just to work on public speaking. What for zero dollars? Yeah, people don't know that. Or when I was doing New York One TV. He'd come in and be a guest at midnight. I hosted a show. Practicing, practicing, for, um, practicing. Oh, what was it for? Call Unnecessary Roughness. It was on a few different radio stations for like, well, it wasn't get paid. It was like WOR, um, WABC, but you got a free meal from it. It was a three-hour show, and I'd have a different Jeez. giant in jet coming each week and host the show with me. And Michael was like, the guest three fourths is done <laughs> just to work it, but three hour shows wow. without getting paid. Wow. So people don't see that's that like side of how much he worked. Yeah, how much yeah. time he put in. We both put in that. It's that work that you put in it when no one's watching, and no one knows. Yeah, right. he's so good at it. Yeah, yeah he's he so is. good. Yeah. But even back then, he would like literally we're in front of a while he was we're playing in a synagogue though. where everybody's like a cough away from a heart attack, and he's just fucking murdering it in there. And he'd have to be at practice the next day. Yeah, yeah. And this was like his second year we started doing this. So it was ninety four. Damn, yeah. old school. Man. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, he likes it. Incredible. That's incredible. What? A, what? A speaking, ride. speaking of the Giants and Jets, were you? Uh, well, obviously, you're probably a, more of a Giants fan. I grew up being a Giant fan, but then that went out the door when you start covering them. You're not a fan of anybody, you know. Yeah, a fan of everybody, really. Yeah, yeah. Were you sub uh, not surprised? We knew it was coming, but Aaron Rodgers on the Jets, big no. deal. Big yeah, deal. Yeah, huge. That's huge, huge for them. Deal. Oh, absolutely. With that I mean, defense? Because here's the thing people don't understand about the Jets. They're not just competing with the Giants. No. They're competing no. with the Yankees. Oh, fuck. That's true. Everybody in New York is competing with the Yankees, and they don't realize that. It's not just the Giants and Jets. It's the Knicks, the Red, but it's the Yankees. So to get a guy like Aaron there makes him extremely relevant in that town, but also 
when you get a pissed off Aaron Rodgers. Trouble. Yeah, it's trouble. Trouble. Yeah. Especially and they've done a defense. great job putting together the rest of that roster. Hell Joe yeah. Douglas has done a really good job. And drafting. Sauce yeah. Gardner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like savage. Yeah. I, I, He's all when he comes back. Yeah, healthy yeah. And, yeah, Wilson. I've, I've been to Jets games. I've been to Giants games in those stadiums. Yeah, totally different. I, I, was, about, I was about to yeah. ask you. It's the strange thing, but... There is such a difference yeah. between Giants fans and Jets fans. Because Giants fans have won. They're not as angry. That's Jets fans Jets, haven't. You they're see angry. fights. Super angry. Jets yeah. fans, you see fights. You see a yeah, dozen yeah. fights break Because they always suck. Yeah. They haven't won that, shit that, since Namath. Yeah. So they haven't won anything yeah. since Namath. <laughs> yeah. They That's haven't hard. had a good quarterback in I don't know how long. Yeah, well, hard. Chad Pennington was great, but yep. he kept getting well, injured. He'd be great for yep. two games. You might be the only guy that calls him great. He was good. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But Aaron Rodgers going there? Dude. So excited. How long has he been playing out? What, what's what year is he in? Aaron? Yeah. Eighteen? Oh, is that mm, eighteen years no, now? No before. No yeah. Way. I'm gonna say it's eighteenth. Oh five. That's yeah, what there you go. Oh five to twenty. Oh five, yeah. He's played that long. Yep. I had no idea. Yep. At that level. <laughs> mm -hmm. Remember he he sat the first like seventeen years. So this would be eighteen. Two, three yeah. years. He did. Because yeah. yeah, Brett Varr was the yeah. quarterback. That that in itself, and I was around for all that, and people don't remember, like there were fans boycotting, picketing, showing up with, with signs, wanting Brett Favre and not Aaron Rodgers. And the fact he was able to deal with that, I mean, mental health-wise, before we've ever talked about mental health, to be able to deal with all these people just hating him, shitting on him as a young kid, and he's a kid back then. Kid. He's 25 years old. And and you have a fan base showing up with signs, picketing, hating you, not wanting you in. And for him to go out Damn. and just slice up the league the way oh. he did, that makes him that a gangster. A, him a gangster. Years, man. Holy shit. I, and that's what, you know, they're kind of looking at Jordan Love. I'm like, nobody's going to be able to do what Aaron had done. He's unique. No. He's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best who ever did it. And this kid could be great. But what Aaron did, and people just don't give Aaron enough credit for being able to stand up to that the kind of baptism. That's hard, fire, man. man. That's but it, that's that's more than that's drowning. That's you know you're yeah, getting your head the, stuck the in the there for a while and light your ass in your early twenties. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Enjoy yeah. that shit. But you, you talk about like the mental aspect of the game in, in your book. You talk yeah. about Unbreakable with yeah. the mental side. I feel like it's become more of a narrative now, especially with players. Yeah, yeah, big time. You know, and listen, I, I wrote my book. Um, because, like, we talk mental health, mental health these days, and the, the book is, you know, how I turn my depression, anxiety, and a motivation, and you can too. Um, and I did use it. Like, I wake up, it's an everyday thing. And I think a lot of people in, in, in the fight world, obviously, a lot of us in this business and football, we're, we're fucked up going in, right? But we never talked about it. So I just, you know, I built up this crazy character of, you know, the glaze and having fun on TV, and being crazy and fighting in football is a badge of honor, but no one knew how much pain I was in. And it was yep. every day of my life, I wake up and I wake up in something called the gray. And it's literally every fucking day. I wake up, I think the sky is falling. I'm fucking crazy. And the roommates in my head are telling me really bad things like everybody hates me and everything's against me. It's hard for me to get out of bed, but it's been like this my entire life. I don't know any other way to exist. For and you, it's normal. So you, you, it's you've normal. always been this way? Always, since I was a little kid on. And man, and the anxiety I've had, Anxiety attacks every time I've been on TV from 2005 on. I've never not. And I don't understand why it happened. First one was in empty Raider Stadium, and I felt like I was having a heart attack. And it was weird for me because I'm, I'm great in chaos. I suck in calm, which is why mm -hmm. I cause a lot of chaos a mm -hmm. lot of times. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know why it happened there because it's chaos, so it's usually good. But then it became habitual, and I just didn't know what was going on. Like my hands are shaking, my eyes are darting back and forth. I'm kind of hyperventilating, and I'm... As I'm on camera, I'm dealing with this, and I call it wrestling with my abuser because I'm kind of almost like negotiating with it. Wrestling like, with mm -hmm. your abuser, wow. Just leave me the fuck alone. Don't choke me out here. Yeah, not right now. I, not right now. Yeah. Not right now. Wait till we get home. Let, wait till we get home. So yeah. you're talking to the, you're talking sort of to the other side. To the voices, yeah. yeah. And um, But the depression part, like, man, I wish I could have talked about this a long time ago. And so I'll give you an example. Like with Strahan, um, one night... About a year and a half ago, so before I came out with this book, but like right before, um, I started posting about like mental health checkups each day just to show everybody, like, again, I'm trying to give it words. Like, we all talk mental health, but who the fuck's giving it words? Who's describing it so we can start having this conversation? Yeah. So, in the past, when I'd have like, called the beast getting out of the box and I have a bad fucking night, um, 
I just pop some Vicodin and drink and go out and usually get in some trouble. And, you know, and, and this night for one night, I was going out to dinner with Stray Ann. I said, man, I can't go out tonight. He said, well, I said, Beast got out of the box and I just need to chill instead of dealing how I used to. And he said, uh, well, shit, you want, you want to talk about it? I said, no, not right now. I'm really beat up. Because also when I have bad depression spell or anxiety spell, I feel it like in the left side of my gut. My joints start aching like crazy. Damn, uh, physical. Behind my rib cage. And you, yeah, you were born with this, Jerry? You yeah. think it was yeah, childhood I mean, trauma? Yeah, I think it's everything. Like Everything. It's all I remember. So I don't really know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. But it's my earliest childhood memory. So physical, and it becomes physical. It becomes physical. Yeah, it's fucking exhausting. And he's shaking his head, right? Yeah. You get it. And there's... When yeah. I was younger, that my parents took me to many. They almost took yeah. my gallbladder out because really I had such a pain every day. It was after my brother passed. Wow! And every day, see that? And right yeah. before surgery, they were like, eh, "Maybe not. Wait, let's hold off." I was at the I hospital in Chicago. See, look how cool it is that he can talk about it now, which we wouldn't have done. He lost four hundred pounds. So like, long it used to be four hundred pounds. Fuck, really? Mm -hmm. I was four hundred. Good for you, pounds. dude. Proud of you, man. Yeah. Thank you. But it's like he wouldn't have felt comfortable talking about that. A year ago? No, we would have right. made fun of him. Right, you would have made fun of him. Right. <laughs> I have jokes right now. He gained 400 <laughs> pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, no, I have jokes in the chamber right now, yeah. but I was like, you know what? It's funny, it's funny, it's funny, funny Jay, when you talk this way, because I always, I see you, I've known you yeah. peripherally, I see you as a, a bigger than life guy yeah. who's always fucking like at it. You're, you're a man. Which you're, I am. Tough yeah. guy. But Fuck when yeah. you talk this way, it bring, I, I, it's impossible not to love you a little bit. Oh, I appreciate it. But you know what I mean? Because it's when somebody's vulnerable like this. my ass cry. But it's really true. It's When somebody's vulnerable like this, when you're this because you're helping people i like i'm i'm watching you and i i just have such a deep life like anybody that knows jay knows he's like this you like said what that. i said when, uh, when said uh, tom, our booker called, when tom the booker goes jay i went i love jay yeah. He's like, really? I feel like you guys yeah. want to get along. I've never no, heard I've known Jake forever, man. Yeah, I know. You shit. and I have always got along. Train together. Always, just, always. I used to bring him in to train my football players. He'd be yeah. like, what the fuck you making me do? Yeah. I'm like, no, you're just going to wrestle these 19 football players. Yeah. He's like, what the fuck am I doing Wild. this for? Yeah, I'm like, you play, man. Come on. I didn't know that. I'm yeah. like, Brent, I'm fucking 5'7 yeah. and Jewish. You fucking do this. I don't want to do this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but so, so the story was straight. I'm like, he's like, you want to talk about it? I said, not tonight. I just want to go to bed. I could sleep this one off. And he said, you want me to come over at least? I said, nope. And he goes, why have you never told me? I said, I don't, I don't make the rules up of this shit, dude. I just know with you, I felt ashamed. But he goes, yeah, but you took away my ability to be your best friend for 35 years. Wow. I could have been there all those years. Wow. That's why I wrote this book. But question, J so does, does, start does, does about Strahan this, struggle from any of this? He he understands it. He gets it. But he and doesn't he, No, from no I, I let him talk about that. Yeah. So, um, But there's certain things now we connect on that mm. he... And because now I'm kind of I'm doing a lot of inspirational talking on it, how to get us through this. How shit. do you do it? And yeah. when I talk to him about it, he's like, "Oh shit, man, that resonates with Check. me." That gets yeah. the guy really with the most is the Rock wrote my forward. Wow! And he was like, "Dude, you're going to be a voice for all of us in the gray." I can't talk about it. And now he's starting to talk about it. So he like, and he didn't just like throw it away. He like really got deep in my shit and interviewed me over it, this and that. He's like, "I want this to to make a difference for all of us." You're gonna be the one that leads it. Well, I've always said about that. The Rock, the Rock. Sometimes, um, I don't know him. I don't know him. But but uh, he's somebody authentic. Who, as somebody fuck, who's dude. always always going yeah. going yeah, going yeah. going. No, exactly. Like his, his schedule's so crazy. Yeah. When I see him laugh, I don't see his eyes laughing. Hmm. So so for me, I always think that there's something going on. There's yeah. a depression there. There's something going yeah, there, on. Yeah, and he's talking about it now. Yeah, which I'm proud of it because that's what we need to do. And then because I don't think listen, I don't think we're I'm in the minority. No, right. I think no. we're in the majority. Not with type A personalities. It, a lot of times, what drives no. you is anyway, especially successful people. You're all. You can't be successful and not have some crazy. You got to be a misfit, right? I never <laughs> met a comic. I never met a comic, Jay. Right. It, worth their salt. Who who is normal and who had a less than chaotic upbringing? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. I mean, am yeah. I wrong? But but think about it. If, if more guys are open and talking about, it, I always think of my favorite player growing up, who I modeled myself, Junior Seau. Right. Right. Now, his yeah. might have been CT, but I think there. Were, he talked no, no, about he it was, before. He, he had a lot of depression yeah. Yeah. before, even before yeah. that. He'd have a lot of depression. Yeah, a lot of pressure on from his dad. Like a lot childhood yeah. trauma. A lot of that is on Junior Seau. Yeah. Where if it yeah. was now, maybe you would talk about it. Maybe you know, maybe yeah. you could save some people. And where I'm trying to do with people, I just talked to the, the last year. I talked to the uh, Vikings and Seahawks about this, and I said mental health is so reactive. It's and we're not proud of it enough. You know, you break your arm, we sign your cast, mm. right? I came in here right away and I showed you guys my my. In you know, my MRI on my back, I'm like, look how fucked up my back is. I'm missing my L4, L5. I'm all fucking proud of this shit, right? We don't do this. Our mental health, 
we hide it, right? So I said, but you guys are, the only time we talk about mental health is when the sky is falling. We go to see a therapist. And it's too late. But you guys don't just work on uh, catching balls when you have the drops. You don't just bench press when you feel you're getting weak. You're constantly doing it. So we got to start doing this reactively. The problem is, there's probably not enough therapists out there for us yet. We've got nope. People don't trust them enough yet, which they need to, which they're our coaches. So in the meantime, I want to get us to lean into each other and be our teammates, be our therapists. And I said, think of how much closer this will make you guys if you all realize you're all in this shit together, you all got it, and you can lean into wow. each other on this. That's weird for guys. We still Fucking don't do so it. so weird, right? No, I would not I'm I'm doing do it with you guys right now. It. We don't do it. We know each other. Yeah. We're, we're as close as it gets. But I don't think you'll be close if you do this shit. We weave a couple times, but for the most part, we don't fucking, we're doing work. It's like, no matter what we're going through. Strand Strand and I have been best friends since 93. Our relationship is never stronger since we've been. So, what do you do, Jay? What what, what can somebody do when they wake up? So, here, okay, so when I wake up and I'm having a fucking horrible day, like I'm just in my bed, damn near crying, like, man, just, it's a hopeless, like I said, heavy, dark, gray feeling. Um, I will immediately, on those days, I will call four friends of mine, and it's the strays and the rocks and people, and then two other people, um, and tell them. Because the more like I don't feel like I'm fighting alone, walking this walk with someone, it helps out a little bit. And then I'll call four other people. You tell them, you tell them. I'll tell them, like, fuck, I'm struggling today. Man, look at why. I don't know. I'm just struggling today. But even like when I'm on that. But I'm telling you, it's helped me. So when I'm on set at Fox Devil Sunday, and I'm having one, I'll tell Kurt Menefee and Howie Long, I'll go, fuck, I'm having one. And it just to be able to say it is, it, it takes the pressure off me a lot. It mm. helps out a lot. Because you don't have to be, I, didn't, I'm, I don't have to bring walk your this shadow, walk alone. You can bring your shadow in the room. Yeah, I don't have to walk this walk alone. I got this power in numbers. I got a fucking fight team with me, right? But then I'll call four other dudes and not tell them what's going on with me and just check up on them. Because one of the things I try to use to get through this is be of service. And by me checking up with one of my boys, that's me being of service, and it really fucking helps me get through. And you're, mm-hmm. he's he's nodding yes again over here, yeah. All right, and just being of service helps me so much. Whether it's charity work or or just something simple like this, just telling somebody else, and then I'll immediately, no matter what, get myself some kind of workout. Like if you could take a workout and put it in pill form, oh, it'd yeah. be the greatest. Do you say to like yourself? It. Is there a way you talk to yourself like when when you wake up and stuff? Um, hey, God bless your fiance. Oh my God! So she dealing she, with your shit all no the time. No shit, absolutely, <laughs> no like, doubt. No, she's like, oh, yes. Fuck. But here's the other thing too. I'm, I'm 53. Yeah, it's the first time I've found love. I've had been you know married and well, you were in the way. This you were that. in the way probably I, so much. I was. I pushed everybody away. I sabotaged because I felt I wasn't worthy of it. Mm-hmm. Right? So they can't possibly love me like this. So I'm going to fuck it up before anything. That's right. This girl, Rosie Tennyson, is the um, is the first one. And like the other two weeks ago, I had a little meltdown. And she was like, hey, 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 I'm not going anywhere. Like, I'm getting choked up talking about it. Like, nice try. I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. And I get choked up because it's like, she's like, I'm not going anywhere. No matter what you can do, I'm here. I am here. No matter what. And that's the first time someone's really got me and done that for me. And it, but Dude. my point is, I'm 53, Dude. so it's never too late that's to find that. It's fucking never, huge, man. That's, yeah. yeah, that's that's like yeah. that's like. Yeah. What was your childhood like, though, Jay? Your parents? Yeah. Yes, yeah. There you yeah. Go. just nonstop chaos. That's what. I yeah, I was going to yeah. add that was my next question. It was fucking chaos. Yeah. Talk, talk, talk about <laughs> hey, your childhood. But it was great too because my parents took me to a therapist when I was like four. Like I'm the fucked up one. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I feel like you guys need <laughs> hey, guys, couples yeah. counseling. What was what was me? What was your childhood like? It's just chaos. It's just, just chaos. chaos. Your dad, what do you do? Just, just chaos. Just businessman went to New York every day, and God. it was just chaos. And um, I don't think they would look at it that way, but I don't know how I look at it. Yeah. And you know, they did but it was, best. but it was they also it's best. a chemical thing. And I've also been on. Here's the other thing: I've been on over thirty meds, and none have worked. And like, none. listen, if there's anybody who should be a weed guy, it's me. But fucking weed, I suck at weed. Me too. Me too. Oh man, I fucking wish I was great at it. Right? I'm the zombie. paranoid guy. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a paranoid. I'm I terrible. I, Shit. I, I, I can't it, breathe. It I have pains in my neck. Yeah, I got yeah. the, I'm I'm anxiety. Oh all the fuck yeah, no, it's terrible. What about mushrooms? Have you tried psilocybin? Yeah, yeah. And I've actually done that with therapist, and that has been a game changer for me. Um, yeah, I've done some some deep, like eight hour sessions with them that got me to really see some things of why I'm so fucked up. Wow. Um, 
But I like to say I'm fucked up, but I'm good with my fucked upness. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, absolutely. You made it work 100%. for you. Yeah, and, but that's the other thing too. It's like, sad if you're the, coming here like asking us for money. You know? yeah, no. then, then this, <laughs> then this podcast <laughs> isn't cool, <laughs> right? But I know it's cool because you're successful. Put on a Sarah McLaughlin song. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> grab to say, guys, I need to borrow ten thousand dollars. You guys mind if I'll I get back by Tuesday? <laughs> you guys mind if I just keep my GoFundMe up there real quick? Is that cool, <laughs> right? And we're like, ah, oh, god damn it, Jay. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, oh, fuck, Jay, so close. No, and I need his back surgery. He's not even his back. He's not even his back. He doesn't have depression. This is all. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. It's a ruse. He's got a gambling <laughs> problem. I need to borrow the money. whole the the title of the book. I say how I've turned my depression, anxiety, into motivation, and you can too. Because and then what this does also, it gets you to feel so unloved. So I didn't really feel I could feel love from the inside out. So it forced me and motivated me to go do all this great shit and to go eleven years with without getting a full-time paycheck. I was so damn motivated to go do great things to get some love from the outside in and hope that one day they meet in the middle mm. and I could live a, a peaceful existence. And I'm I'm still working work in progress. I ain't, I'm not there yet. No. I'm getting there. You head the right direction. I'm heading in the right direction. I don't think, I don't but think I think you need those demons, especially in the whatever business yes, you're in, whether it's entertainment, yep. stand up, whatever it is, sports. You need those demons. To, yeah. It's a rocket fuel. Mm -hmm. If you channel it right, it's rocket fuel. But at one That's point, we got to take those monsters and we got to put them in a box because we deserve to be happy. Mm. You know, and I've, I've had some. Um, I've had some spells of happiness now since I've opened up talking about this. I do a, a podcast now every week where I get to talk about this with people. I had Lindsey Vaughn on this week and get to bond with her about it. And, you know, all, like she's all been people pretty open business. about her yeah. mental health. Yeah. But like comedians I have spade on I've, in a couple of weeks, uh, Freddie Prince Jr. on this week. He's great. I love, I love Freddie. Oh, love shit. Freddie. He's telling Richard Pryor stories. He's a great with guy. His, his dad, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Definitely he, some, and obviously, yeah, and his dad killed himself. He's a, he's a great guy on his own, too. Yeah. He's just, he's, he is phenomenal. But it, he's it one allows me to now talk and get deep with people I, I never would. And that's what I need. I need like this. And that's what made my career. I had these deep relationships with people, with, people, with these football players and fighters for all those years. Yeah. And now it's with everybody else. And it's it's just a deeper it's a deeper existence, which is cool. Well, you realize there's a community out there who loves yes. you and support, and you guys can talk about yep. it. And, and now the and they're at a certain bigger. level too, yeah. where you can relate on that. Yeah. How'd you get into like uh, MMA and having a gym? And, and so and, I had a couple fights early, early, early. Um, oh, you did fight, then, yeah, a couple fights oh, nice. uh, in oh three, I think, and then um, back in the early days when back you, like when jiu jitsu. Yeah. Pure well, no, no, no. Back then it was just. Style versus style. Yeah. I didn't know any jujitsu. I got my ass choked out of my first fight because I had wrestling background, boxing work, had no jujitsu. Uh, and then I was like, well, fuck, I, I better go learn this shit. I don't know what the hell a guillotine is. And, st and went to Henzo's and trained under Henzo for a while and did some tournaments. And then my first day at Fox, I came in. I was uh, I was really busted up. It was what the NFL. What years were you at Henzo's? Oh, three to six, I think. Okay. So I, was there, I was there 97, 98. Okay, yeah. yeah. So... Um, and I was just learning it how not to get choked out so I could ground and pound. And um, but my first day at Fox, I kind of come in there was 04. And by then I'd gone out to, oh, I forget when I was, I went out one point in Arizona and, started tr and joined uh, Arizona Combat Sports. So like me, Ryan Bader, Aaron Simpson, CB Dalloway, Jamie Varner, a whole bunch of us. Real wrestlers. And it was, yeah, it was great. All, and, uh, boys, all wrestlers, yeah. yeah. Um, eventually, like Carlos Condit, Talis Leites. Was Kane team. there then too? No, Kane had gone. To he was San wrestling. Jose? At, he was wrestling at Arizona State, but he went right up to yep. San Jose. Um, and then, so I come into Fox my first day, and like my eyes shut, and my fucking ribs are busted, and my foot is broke, and this and that. And David Hill, the chairman of Fox, is like, what the "Fuck happened to you?" And kind of tell him my eyes shut, and he's like. I don't know what this thing is you're talking about, but you will never fucking do it again. Yeah, he's like, you can't have yeah, this. Like, well, I'm clearly not on TV for my looks. And I realized I am on TV for my looks. <laughs> you are on TV for your looks. No, but, I, but as you know, like you can't stop can't, it. You like, can't have a broken nose. And but you can't stop. Like it's, it kind of institutionalized you. And you just, I felt different. I felt special. Those bonds I had, you know, and my training partners ended up being the Randy Couture's and the Chuck Liddell's and, you know, the Chell Sonnen's, guys like this. And, but it's those bonds that you have and this is really where i started talking mental health after we beat the fuck out of each other we sit in the cage and that's when we open up to each other yeah that's the best times right and that's when you're most vulnerable yes. and like no one's questioning our manhood mm. you start talking about it no, yeah but i couldn't stop so i'm like all right well i can't stop i love it i love the bonds there of these fight teams I, I better learn how to do something else and i started learning how to coach i learned that from randy how to coach and um 
And I realized back then, I'm like, okay, if I can coach the fighter mentality and the fighter grind and the fighter violence to these football players, but then take the sport IQ from football and give it to fighters, then we, it's a fucking gotcha. great trade-off. Because yeah. no one was watching film back then. There was nothing, you know what no. I mean? Besides Randy. But man, they're like, I would sit there with Strahan all night long and he would film, 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 film. And hours and hours i'm like what are you fucking watching he's like look look right here look at john runyon's foot how it's out you know three inches turned to the right on run plays when they're gonna bootleg out here and i'm like the fuck are you looking at and he's like look look at the lester holmes the guard's elbow has a slight twitch Damn, on second, second and tells. eight dude it's unbelievable oh, yeah. so i learned that from them and taught it to fighters and then wow have the wrestler and fighter mentality to football players wow. and then just kind of you know, change things around. So we would work on hand violence and leverage. And again, we did a billion hours of pummeling with these guys to teach them leverage. And um, like I said, I'd, you know, Brandon come in and yeah, help Brandon, me out for a yeah. little bit. And he's like, fuck you, Glazer. Yeah, yeah. Right? Is, is there, <laughs> is there a, <laughs> yeah, I always wondered like the level of athleticism in the NFL, obviously is just so stupid. But it's the, the violence too. It's like, right. Th you can, you know, the guys that, that really get it, the Andrew Whitworth and the Lane Johnson, some of these guys, they fucking play forever because they get it because they make it a fight and they just make it, you know, the Ray Lewis make it violent yeah, every bro. fucking play. Real violence. Right? Yes. Violent. Yeah, totally like different level. Right? There's like, the, you, but you can go on forever. They're, but they're, but, but they're, they're, like, I don't think, I don't really know, but I, I've heard him talk, like the, what it takes to be in that fight on a football field where you're, the injury every rate is 100%. You're yep. always something's always wrong, and you're in a real fight. But it's not worse than fighting. Fighting, you you can go in a game and come out of a game, yeah. and like, okay, I'm exhausted. Fight every time you go to fight, you're going to come out. Something's going to be different you're about your different. body forever. 100, percent forever. Yeah, 100%. Right. I wonder change. is is the best MMA fighter that anybody's ever seen playing in the NFL right now. In other words, that athleticism. Yeah, athleticism. That's what makes John so. Fucking but it's ridiculous. more than just athleticism. Yeah. I feel like fighting. Well, John, John, if you put him through a combine, would do awful. Correct. Awful. That's but what I'm he's saying. just his IQ, the way he's yeah. built. Yeah, right. But he's he athletic him, for the sport. Correct. MMA, yeah. But that's yeah. why yeah. I was, yeah. that's that's why I was yeah. He's not going to run a great four. No, when they, they say right. athlete, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's different. But most so of these athletes, athletes, they don't, they, and this is why I try and tell these football players, most of these guys are signed up for a sport. They ain't signed up for a fight. Right. So if you make it a fight, different. most of these guys across from you, they're going to tap out. Yeah. And that's where, like our guys too, like, fuck, don't put your hands on your hips. Don't show your tire. If you watch Andrew Whitworth, he would go in. Everybody goes in in a huddle, right? Andrew, if you go back and watch film now, he would only dip his right ear into the huddle because yep. he'd look at everybody else and see who the fuck has their hands on their hips, Damn. who's huffing and puffing, and they'll turn back around and tell, hey, let's go with that guy. Let's w go with that guy. Watch, watch Aaron Donald for the, for yep. the Rams. Yep. It, it, it yes. is a fucking fight, dude. Yep. Really? Yes. And he's oh, dominating too. Every, uh, what is he? Oh, it's terrible. He beats guys up. <laughs> I think it's like, terrible. I think he's like, yeah. with a helmet. They got, I, think, I think he's like six feet, two hundred and eighty pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of muscle. But he is. Shredded. He makes it every single play. He makes it a fight, and he doesn't give a fuck about getting the quarterback. He just wants absolute mass destruction of anybody in front of him. Mass. Every play. Okay. So, Look like, you're him. sitting there at practice, and it's funny because, like, last year. They decided they have to like tell him Jesus. like, hey, we're gonna give you a rest as a veteran rest, but it's not really a veteran rest. They're taking him out for a couple plays so they can have a real practice. Because when he's in so there, disrupt, yeah, they can't it's not a real going. practice. What? And then all he's of a sudden, all the DBs all think they're way better than they are. Yes. Everybody else thinks they're better. He fucks practice up that much. Disrupted. He's that dominant. Yes. So you have to have a real practice when he's not in. Oh it's not real God. when he's in there. It's, it's, yeah. I guess it's, he's that disruptive. It's his I guess first guys. It's his first step. Like, You've yeah. never seen anything like that. Really? Yeah. His hands. It's guys his first like step. him yeah. and Dominic and Sue and those guys who just, I see there. Dominic and Sue. Like, is, is not, is, yeah. yeah. yeah like he's different monster. though than everybody. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I've been here. Well, you know who else is Dominic Derek guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's an outlier. Also, what's his name? The Hall of Fame linebacker for the Falcons. Not for the Baltimore. Uh, oh, Ray Lewis. Lewis. Ray Lewis. Yeah, I mean, same thing. I mean, Omar wrestler, right? Fucking yeah, a wrestling background. Monster. He just. Oh, he was a wrestler. Yeah, he was a wrestler too. But he also has that. He has that every single play. Monster. He'd go back over, and he would. It'd be a new fight for him. It's every a every single play. It's a mentality. But also, That's we talked about John the Gray. Yes, yes, like his mentality. Lawrence Taylor. Just, yeah, absolutely. Oh, Lawrence Dip. So. Oh, dude. I got to cover Lawrence one year. I was gonna say because he's a giant. Yeah, it was great. Him. It was awesome. It was just that motherfucker's different. <laughs> he was the only guy. I've ever been around my life where if you, if Martians came down and there was 10,000 of us in a room, they would look over and go, 
okay, that fucker's different. Yeah. Yeah. He was just different. Did you see his comments when they were like, hey, your sack record's going to be broken? And he goes, what? He goes, it doesn't count. You see how many opportunities they have yeah. today? He goes, I want, I want you to look up how many sacks yeah, I had, he's right. he's how many right. opportunities I had compared to how many yeah. these kids well, have what now. Do you, I don't understand. It's a passing league. Now. Yeah. Now, so yeah. They, they and they throw protect everybody else. 30 times more a game, yeah, at so least. He he and they protect time. you also. So it's like the rules are different. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's, um, I remember one time Dick Vermeil telling me, <laughs> said, man, there was a game we were playing against Lawrence and we had four schemes just specifically to stop him. Yeah. He beat the first one, beat the second one, beat the third one, beat the fourth one, four sacks. He's like, I, 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 I don't really know what else to do. He's like, I double team and triple yeah. team and chip well, jump, that, slid, that, that, everything. That, that, that I, quarterback, I don't know what I think the quarterback for the yeah. Jets or whatever was mic'd. Yeah, and, and so somebody's got to stop. Yeah, and he would he would, he would jump over the halfback. Yeah. The halfback yeah, tried. Yeah, he's, he's like, I remember when he goes, yeah. he goes, who's gonna? They're talking in a quarterback, or someone says, who's gonna? Who's blocking Taylor? Yeah, and he goes, the halfback, and you hear the quarterback go, no, he's not. Right. <laughs> <And> that's what <laughs> I. Nobody. He jumped over. No, no, no. And that's and he didn't really train. He didn't work out. No, God bless him. No, he's just dipped. But well, he you had know that else was fucking like, real, dude. Bo, 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 uh, Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson. Oh, he was ridiculous. Bo Jackson never lifted weights. I talked to him about it. He said. I never lifted weights. I would just strap it on and go in there and I'd hear them go, Bo's in the game. He was, when I worked with him 10 years after he was yeah. playing, I don't know what it was, he was still 6'2", 245, yeah. and just Short all muscle. Career, though, I did an appearance with him. Yeah, he blew out that hip. hip. But Howie Long's like, that's the freakish, most freakish guy I've ever been around in my I, life. Yeah, because Howie played with him later. Yeah. I was around him when he was playing. Dude, Howie has a story. He, Howie is one of my best he, friends. Jack Allen, like, strong all hands. Everything. Love Howie. Handsome and, and, and Howie's also like, and I write this in the book because I, part of the thing I do for my own depression and shit is play jokes a lot because I like to laugh. So laughing, we're talking about comedians. Um, laughter, I always say the gray hates laughter. So I'm always trying to laugh and fuck around. But Howie, like everybody's afraid of. So I would, like he's like my muse. Like I play so many jokes on him. It's like I put one time, I put a bumper sticker on his car. Like this fucking big I love porn, and he just drove around Beverly Hills. It's fucking Howie Long, <laughs> right? And then that's fucking. And he's that's driving around hilarious. Beverly Hills, and he finally comes back in, and people he goes, people are honking at me, and they give me a thumbs up. And he goes, just think, because I'm Howie Long, <laughs> like nobody will put a bumper sticker on Howie Long's car like this, right? And then I got him again. And I can't say it because it's not politically correct enough. Oh, I got my him God. again, and he calls me. He he drives his car in the Beverly Wilshire, and it's a really fucking raunchy bumper sticker it's really bad and this black tie event is getting out and all of a sudden they come over and they're like taking pictures of his car and the doorman over there a boy drew is like oh, mr long any chance you were mr glazers today he goes yeah what oh fuck and he looks over <laughs> and there's this bumper sticker and he calls me up he goes do you leave another bumper sticker on my car i said mom who is this <laughs> he fucking i drive him crazy i were like he's what, scared one, dude. one year I'm i found out that guy one time I found out, like, our, our assistant, like, what his flight info was, and he was flying commercial, so I, like, waited to know exactly when he was in his seat, and you know those, like, really bad, like, anybody ever seen those, that shit where if you turn on, it's like a bad porn, and someone's, like, screaming, and you can't stop yeah. it, yeah. so I fucking send him that, and he's sitting there, like, first class, it's like, ah, ah, yeah. ah, and he's trying to turn his fucking phone off, and he's sitting next to an old lady up there, and he's like, what happens if that's the last thing? Like the plane goes down. That's the last thing that someone said. I said, not my problem, bro. Not my problem. Yeah, so. <laughs> why, why are people afraid of him? Because he's usually kind of serious. Fucking Howie Long. Yeah. yeah, yeah my, what you see is what you get. Top, he's a bad yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, his kids are bad. His too. kids are bad, but they also can't like, we can't believe you do that shit to dad. I'm like, what are you going to yeah, beat me you up? You ever hear him talk about his dad, about like Howie Long? Um, I think he beat his own dad up. Mm. Right. We won't get into his dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? So, his dad hey, was bad. He told the story. He told the story. I'll let him tell. But there was one time I was training Kyle and Kyle Long um, in our old spot, the spot you came and trained at, right? And um, so we're kind of like going over hand violence with, with Kyle. So most of these linemen, they're used to kind of open handing, right? So I'm like, instead of smashing guys forearms open hand, let's hammer fist, yeah, yeah. right? Teach like a hammer fist that fighters use. On your form, so it's the same thing as like a low leg kick. Jeez. Attack those nerves over and over and over and over Ow. and over. And, you know, I don't care how tough you are, eventually you're going to get that grip, right? So we're going over with, with Kyle. And Howie, like, but he kept buttoning in, kept buttoning in, kept buttoning in. I'm like, Howie, you're like fucking honey boo boo's mom. Just sit over there and let me fucking work with Kyle. You can bring him here. And uh, he kept buttoning in. I said, Howie, let me show you what we're doing. And all of a sudden I go, and I fuck, oh shit. And I crack Howie's form. 
a crack is formed with a hammer fist. And he goes, why the fuck would you do that? Why? And he goes and he gets like his car key and he puts it in here in between his knuckle and fucking tries to punch me in the eye you know, with his car key. <laughs> like hey, he's yeah. trying to like, <laughs> it's fucking how we log. Yeah. I'm like, I caused pain and he was going to fuck me up. Yeah, yeah. You know what? He yeah. put his car key right in the middle of his fucking, Jesus, his two yeah, fingers and tried to fucking yeah, tag yeah, me yeah, in the yeah, face yeah. with it. Yeah. So, <laughs> Howie's, Howie's no joke. Bro. No, no joke. No joke. No. He's, yeah, he's like, He's another guy who, who's, um, I, I worked, I did a thing. I didn't work with him, but he was in, when I was doing Mad TV, we were in New Orleans and he was helping us do some bits and stuff. And I remember just being in the same trailer. Right. He, was, he was changing. You were horrified. He was putting, on, he was putting his <laughs> mic on. He was rock hard. Well, I just couldn't believe how big he was. Yeah. Like his jaw, like he just looks yeah. like 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 a, a cartoon character. Same And dude. his hand, I shook his hand. He had this, I think a Rolex on. You know, you just feel like for your guy built like me, you just feel like such a bitch. Where, where, how, where, where, how did he play college ball? Villanova. Oh, wow. Small mm -hmm. time school too. Tiny, yeah. Yeah. But he was 280. Jesus. Naturally 280. He he, yeah, he's just, he's total now. Like he's still the same size. Yeah. And, and uh, why did he stop being? He he was being a movie star for a while. He was starring. Yeah, story. once he had um, kids starting getting older, he's like he's like, uh, yep, broken hour and firestorm professional. We give him a lot of shit over those, <laughs> um, <laughs> but he just wanted to spend time with the family. Yeah, he's like, that's it. I'm gonna like he Beyond like smart. he's yeah. the best smart. dad. So you know, I ad I adopted my son, and I learned how to be a dad from him. Like I literally, like I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, mm. and then like you learned from Howie. Yeah, like he's such a. You great adopted dad. your son? How old, how old? I met him when he was two. Oh, that's uh, cool. My man. son Sammy. Yeah, I think you met him. Right? Yeah, I met him. Yeah, he was at yeah. The, yeah and yeah. he, you just decided to adopt the. Uh, I was with the mom, and then we split up. I oh, still gotcha. want to be with him, and so I adopted him after we got uh, after we split up, and he's just man, he's my dude. That's yeah, cool, man. He's awesome. That's amazing. But I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, so I literally like looked like turned like how many like how we really both his kids play in the NFL. Two of them, two of the three. Two of them, yeah. Yeah, and the other one works for the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. Cal's a stud. Uh, Does he play the same position? <gasps> no, he was no. offensive, offensive lineman. lineman. Bro, he is the meanest, nastiest fucking boy, oh boy, dude right. you will ever be around. Like, that's who you want. That's protecting Kyle your quarterback. Chris. Kyle. Yeah. The only one that didn't play in the NFL is the Howard. Howie. Howie. See, look at Kyle. Look, look, go down to Kyle. Does he not look like a cast off from Taken? Look at the size uh, yeah. of that motherfucker. And he has boxes in his stomach. He is the strongest dude who's ever put his hands on me in my entire life. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And they, I've trained, oh, man. We've trained, fuck, I don't know, a thousand athletes over the, over the course of all these years. Yeah, it's him being slim. He ain't slim like dad. that. And uh, he is now, but, man, yeah, he, he is He's a, slimmer now, yeah? He's a mean fucking. Wow. It's exactly who you want protecting your quarterback. Yes. Jesus. So he, so he went to was, Oregon? Uh, he, did for, he played like four games and was the 20th pick of the draft. <sighs> He was also the number one pitching prospect in America, left-handed pitching prospect. Went down to Florida State for a full ride and left there and ended up playing football. But he, we have a, a again. So you see the size of the fucking guy. So was, there was a uh, there was a St. Patty's Day week. He comes out and he would stay with me when he was going to train, and he would be my son's Manny. Uh, that's so he'd cool. Stay with me. He'd be Sammy's Manny, and it was great. I trained him. It was fucking fantastic. Mm -hmm. He's my little brother, and so. He's flying back out and he's going to stay with me for a little while. I said, All right, I'm, I'm at this bar over in you know, West Hollywood. We always hung out called Rock and Raleigh's. And um, um, I said, Come meet us, Raleigh's, and just drop your shit off at the house. Come meet us there. He goes, Great. So I said, Sammy's there. Go mess with Sammy for a little bit. Come meet us. So all of a sudden, I'm sitting there at the bar and Kyle calls me and he goes, You moved? I was like, Fuck, did I not tell you? He goes to my old house, kicks the door in. <laughs> And he's like, Sammy, where are you, motherfucker? And it's like these two old people there, oh. and they're like, no, no, your friend don't live here anymore. Like, he's, like, oh, he's, like, God. He's, like, and he's like, so, you know, Sasquatch comes kicking in yeah, the door. Jay, he's all, Jay's oh, a my prancer, God. He's man. Like, he's two like, Korean, <laughs> come on, Jay. <laughs> he's like, no, it's like an old uh, European com uh, couple, and, but the, he's like, they had like the old phone with the wire with the cord, and they're like, we're gonna call police now. And he's like, I don't know what accent I'm trying to do, but, uh, yeah. but, uh, yeah, what, that was. Uh, what does his third son do? He uh, works for the Raiders. Oh, okay, awful. Yeah, great player. dude. Great dude. Awful. He's done an amazing job with all of them. Him and Diane, they're incredible. Like I said, I learned from them. So it's it's pretty. Yeah, cool. the whole family, the whole squad. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. yeah, he demands excellence. Yeah, Kyle's yeah. yeah. How is he? Yeah, how Chris is won a couple Super Bowls. That's it. You know? Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, I the know. Chances. Right? Think about the chances of that just getting into. 
Well, if your dad's Howie Long, you come from that genetics. Like you look at the yeah, the genetic. NFL. Oh, it's like, yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 separation. Yeah. yeah, it is yeah. genetic. Do, do you uh, do you still train a lot of guys getting ready for like pro days and stuff? Not no. And I stopped with the combine guys because you were um, doing that for a little. bit. I was bit, doing yeah? it for a while. Yeah, and I kind of like. I think guys, it's just changed. How where so? back then, like now, listen, being famous ain't the same as being great, and a lot of them think it's the same thing. And everybody's famous now because of social media. But they haven't so they done anything. They haven't done shit. Yeah. And they don't really have the desire to do it because they're famous and rich. Not good. Where man. back in the day, the only way you got famous and rich is if you made Pro Bowls. So it was a different work ethic. And I don't want to sound like the old grouchy guy, but I also no, but I put right. my body on the line and I do all this shit. I pummel with these guys. I do hand fighting. I box with these guys. We fucking do combo for combo sparring, shit like that. And I'm like, over time, I'm like, man, if they're not going to try and be the Lane Johnsons and the and the Andrew with some guys like that. I don't fuck I don't I don't think I want to put my body and Couture was doing it for me with me for a while. And then Randy had a heart attack in the gym, so that was a hoot. He did. <laughs> you never heard that? No. Huh? Really? No. Did you hear about that one? Yeah, I've heard yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he had a full blown heart attack in the yeah. gym. And uh is he okay he, now? and so Gronk's in the gym working out. Yeah. Jesus and he we're we're doing MMA and, and chest and he started feeling it during the workout. He finishes the workout and all of a sudden something's wrong he gets home and he's like fuck something's wrong he runs to cedar sinai because he didn't want to deal with parking okay <laughs> that's randy couture right <laughs> that's randy couture. Man on the yeah it's like the anti-uber ad right here yeah. right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he runs to fucking cedar sinai i get the call he has a full widow maker heart attack and <gasps> you know what that like is fully it's like when up. you have a compromise in yeah. your yeah. aorta yeah well full blockage yeah full blockage <laughs> so he has like 15 minutes to live is what they told us so gronk is like man I see what you're talking about, like with this MMA program you have here. Like, if I can get some of what like Randy has behind his rib cage and put in me, I'll be unbreakable. I said, "Well, hold that thought, because what he has behind his rib cage is about to fucking explode." Yeah, it's not good, man. Right. Yeah. Hold so, that thought. Let's see how so this ends. I come fucking racing down to Cedar Sinai. I had a bad, both my lungs aspirated during a procedure before I opened Unbreakable, and I woke up at Cedar Sinai and Randy was at my gurney, and I, I was there. I fucking woke up there. He's at my gurney. I'm like, well. If I'm dead, I ain't in heaven because if I was, his fucking ass wouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so I'm like, I got to be there for him. Yeah. So I come fucking busting through post op and boom, I'm, I'm not waiting for them to tell me I can get in there. And I come breaking through and he's like, he's fully awake. He's, they put a stent in. He's like, all right, I'm good to go. I said, uh, and this is like 15 minutes out. I said, what do you mean you're good to go? He goes, yeah, I'm ready to leave. I said, well, let's not leave. Let's see what goes on here. And he goes, no, I'm, I'm good. I said, fuck, let's not. First of all, I'm glad you're live because if you died, we'd have to change the name of the gym to Breakable. It's not a good yeah, brand. You can't, yeah, yeah, it's a bad brand, right? Yeah. So he goes, no, I'm good to go. I said, fuck, dude, let's just hold on here. And, and the, meanwhile, the doctors have told us like a billion times, his fighting days are over, his training days are over. I go, hey, don't fucking tell him that. Like, so don't take away his hope, him. right? Yeah. Just shut the fuck. And so I started getting after the doctors. Just no one fucking come here and tell him again that he almost died and all this shit. Just get out. So a little bit later, he starts sweating, kind of loses color. I'm like, hey, you all right there, dude? And he goes, I don't know, something's going on. So we bring the doctors in. I'm like, don't tell them. They almost died and all this shit. And first thing they said. And um, they said, what's your, uh, what's your uh, pain level at right now? And he goes, yeah, it's about a two. And I go, you can't ask this fucking guy what's pain level. Is. You know who this is? <laughs> and, yeah. Right? So he goes, he goes, they go, well, what was your, I said, you can't ask this guy what his pain level is. He's different than the rest of y'all. And they said, well, what was your pain level at the height of the heart attack? He goes, I was a little worse. I'd say I was about a four. So I go, wait. I said, Randy broke his arm against Gabriel Gonzaga, right? Yeah. I said, what was your pain level like at that? And he goes, didn't fucking hurt. It was a broken arm. It was just pressure. It's just, see, Doc, that's what you're dealing with. Yeah, here. that's what you're dealing yeah. with. Yeah. So wow. a four to him is a four to him is like a billion yeah. for us, yeah. right? Yeah. Damn. So three weeks later, comes back at Unbreakable. We throw him up. We, we're glad you didn't die, party. And um, and all of a sudden, he goes in the office. He fucking comes out. He's fully geared up. I was like, well, what are we? What are we doing here? He goes, Come on, let's go. I said, Dude, we're not doing this. Like, let's. You're, you're three weeks out of a heart attack. He goes, let's go. Let's gear up. I said, bro, he goes, only thing is I'm on blood thinners, but that's not your problem. That's my problem. So I was like, bro, he goes, I would do it for you. 
You I was like, oh, right? Yeah. You right? Like, right. <laughs> oh, it, fuck. You yeah. just slowly He's moved. Still, oh, still working no. out. We went in. Oh, Randy's the same. We went in, bro. The fucking round ended. He didn't stop. Second round ended. We didn't stop. Third round ended. He didn't stop. He just kept Cardio going and going. Us. And he just, the, the style that we, that we coach is from him, it's just relentless. Just on you, on you, on you. You don't, like the pressure is a, is a weapon. And man, it's just, it was fucking one of the worst sessions I ever had. Yeah, with Randy them. would break people. Oh, absolutely. Nice. That's all, that's unbreakable. Yeah. And it just doesn't stop, it doesn't stop. So we finally finished up like four or five rounds. He takes his gloves off, throws them on the fucking ground, and says, hey, fuck those doctors. Walks out of the cage and proceeds to coach for another five hours. It's Randy Couture. Yeah, he's different. So it's like your general doctor yeah. assumption. Ain't so glad he didn't die, just for business purposes. Oh, man, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and if he was about to go, hey, did you say you were at 24-hour fitness <laughs> or something? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and how old is he now? Randy was like 104. Yeah. 60? <laughs> he's he's 59. 40? 59. Legend. Right? Yep, there you go. Handsome son of a bitch. Oh, June 22nd. What's, what's, what's the date? Okay. Former U.S. So he turns 60 soon. Yeah, shit. All right. Yeah, he's different, man. He is he is a different guy. Just a legend. But he's the best, man. Same thing. He is one of the best friends I ever had, man. Is he he's still in, dude. Is he still involved with uh not not really, right? Like his son's not really fighting anymore in Belgium. Yeah, but his son he I think his son took over Extreme Couture. Randy's kind of retired up to uh Flagstaff. He's doing the acting thing. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. It was, it was, awesome. It was awesome, dude. That, that, we, he's he's the best, man. Terry Cruz. That's mm. that's an actor. Yeah. Well then it was me, him, and Chuck, too, so we would work out together. Don't and say that when Randy old... Schwartz picture's on the screen, though, right? <laughs> Terry Cruz played pro football. <laughs> yeah, he did. For, I know. For Washington. Yeah. That's, that's not Well, true. once the greatest MMA yeah. fighter of all time, Terry Cruz had a cappuccino with the Chargers. I, I thought he played for longer than that. No, he wasn't, like, an all-pro. Oh, okay. No. No, no. 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 Yeah. No, Randy is Randy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Randy's, Randy's, Randy's fucking different. Yeah. Yes. Come, well, I mean, with everybody. So was, there was one time, too, we were in the gym, and Stallone's like, hey, I'm going to... Uh, I got to kill Randy off in Expendables. I said, you can't do that. He said, what do you mean? I said, that's our guy. You can't do that. He goes, you're fucking telling me. Because I fucking train with you. you shit ass Jim. I can't kill off one of my people. I go, exactly. He goes, can I cut an arm off? I said, as long as he's alive. Yeah. He goes, great. Tell him he's okay. <laughs> yeah. He just did another Expendable. Fucking oh, friend of the great. year right yeah, here. Hell yeah. Damn right, right? right. Yeah, damn right, dude. <laughs> they didn't right, dude. <laughs> they didn't kill what? him off. Well, friend of the year. Friend, friend of the fucking year. Friend of the year, man. Yeah. And you paid his mortgage. <laughs> yeah. That's a big deal. Jeez. That's pretty awesome. You can't kill him uh, off like who said Jake Glazer. Oh, shit. You got him to change the some current events? Yeah. Is that a John Anik shirt? It is. Nice. One more Good sleep. timing. John yeah, we had John on the oh, shop show today. John Anik was on the, oh, the podcast. Yeah, he's the man. Him I and just, Kenny I saw him. Right. We went to Brian Stan's wedding. Oh, no, he's I really close to Brian Stan. Yeah, yeah. Stan's a great guy. I saw him this week. I did um, I emceed uh, Higher Heroes event down in Atlanta. For How is he doing, Brian Stan? Crush Incredible. It. Yeah. That dude's Crush Captain America. That dude. Yeah. Well, I don't know who he was he's, in previous he, life. He could replace Dana. Like if Dana were to leave, if Dana were to leave the UFC, he's yeah. the guy for the job. Really? Yeah, yeah. What's he do now though? Or the commissioner, or the president, or yeah. Like, yeah, I would vote for him for president. Yeah, yeah, he, he he uh. Oh, does should be the governor of California. Yeah, he, he does went on and got his masters. Um, he uh, he was we were broadcasting the UFC together at Fox. Yeah, crushing. Business, but like crushing. I don't know who he was in a previous life, but I think he was like Jonah Salk, and like God has blessed him with his life coming forward. It's like right. he's incredible. Wow. He is incredible. Great, you know, silver great star, human being. Got yeah. the silver star from President Bush. Um, went on WEC light heavyweight champ of the world. And he was great at commentating too. Great and then at he, commentating. He left the sport and played football in Annapolis. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Like he's done everything. Stud. Yeah. He makes stud. me feel like nice a great loser. dad too. Incredible dad. Yeah. Great dad. He just dad. got remarried in uh, Malibu and that's where I saw him. Oh, shit. Uh, Anik. Anik. Yeah. yeah. And then I moved to Malibu as a result. Oh, well, you moved out there? Yeah. Yeah. I was living in Arizona. Moved out here with my girl. Love it. Five for, yeah, it's great out there, brother. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I'm out there all the time. Are you? All the time. Oh, fuck with you. my kids. Where, where are you? Hang out. Yeah. Where are you at? In Malibu. Malibu. Yeah. Yeah, I love it out there. All right, Jim, what do you got? Yeah, shout out to got? Brian Stan. Definitely. Um, so, first of all, a friend of the show, Jelly Roll, he'll be performing on American Idol. I don't think, and so Jelly Roll, he did that uh, performance with Laney Wilson, mm -hmm. which was Save incredible. Me, they did, yeah. Yeah, he, he did his huge song. His number one song yep. in the was Save Me. But you don't realize how big time Jelly Roll is now because um, American Idol people make fun of it. I watch it every episode. But for him to be the feature on the finale of American Idol, it's usually like Katy Perry, uh, you know, Shakira, J-Lo. 
It's fun. Our boy Jelly Roll. I know, dude. You know, with tattoos on his face, it makes us get drunk with him. <laughs> He's on American Idol. That's great. It's insane. Such Sweetheart a, of a dude. I texted him last night. I'm like, bro, guy. American Idol? He goes, you watch it? I go, do I ever? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, I want to make sure you knew, but you oh, obviously I knew, yeah. knew this, I mean, yeah. they were texting last night. Yeah. Nuts up. So cool. Insane, dude. So, so And did you watch so the, uh, the CMAs with that L Lainey Wilson? Yeah, I saw the clip. God, right? it's good. Yeah, yeah. She's freaking killing it right now, too, Lainey Wilson. She won She's every amazing, award. Yeah. She had a great quote. She goes, uh, for all you dreamers out there, you got to be a, 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 a doer. Mm. She goes, everyone has dreams. The That's difference right. is I, like it. I grind it. I'm a doer. That's she right. goes, not only am I a dreamer, I'm a doer. So I had the dreams, but I put in the work to get to yeah. my dreams. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everyone's going to tell you to dream, but yeah. you got to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Take action. It was a great message. Yep. I'm not going to lie to you. I saw a couple episodes recently. Of, uh, American <laughs> that girl who sang the... Uh, the uh, Whitney Houston song. Oh, nuts. Oh, my God. It was unbelievable. Nuts. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. And I like the big Hawaiian dude. Yeah, everyone loves yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if he's going to win because he sings the From same what I've heard. Hawaiian song every yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> All he does is the Hawaiian song. I'm like, every yeah. week, though, that's bro? Thing. That's the thing. That's his only thing. He's like, there is he? No matter what yeah. it is, it's like Pop Culture Week. No, he's singing, you know, the Hawaiian it's, shit. Yeah. He's only in Hawaiian shit. Is that shirt. a guitar or ukulele? Yes. It's got to be a uke, right? Uke. I think it's a ukulele. But he's so big, yeah. it, looks it looks like, like a ukulele. Yeah. 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 But it might be a guitar. Yeah. I, uh, he's amazing. He's the one I showed you with his video of his dad yeah. dying. Yeah. Mm. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, his dad passed away, so he stopped singing, and then his mom submitted his video. No, to really? Idol. Now See, he's yeah, the, I missed all that. Oh, bro. Oh, wow. That that's, show makes I me think cry. That's a guitar, yeah, right? me too. It looks like a mix. It looks like a guitar, but he's huge, so yeah. He has to be 400 pounds. Yeah. Six strings. Right? For me, that's an oversized guitar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. All I can think about is his pancreas. That's like when I was surfing, because I'm so big, I, you know, my board's huge. People are like, oh, you're paddle boarding? I'm like, no. That's it. That's my surfboard, man. Son of a bitch. What do you got, Jim? Uh, so speaking of music, this is not that new, but so Ed Sheeran, remember his Thinking Out Loud song sound yeah. a lot like uh, Marvin Gaye. And the Marvin Gaye family was suing him. Yep. Here's what's interesting. He did you goes, think it, did you think it? No, like it? It I didn't think so. Hold on. The yeah. beat is almost identical, but mm. Ed Sheeran's case was so smart, so good, because it, it's like the, it's a, a chord progression, chord, chord pattern. But he but he showed examples exactly of so many other songs, songs using that. the same yeah. chord progression. That's He's how like, music is. A lot of music uses the same, per yeah. I didn't steal from him. A lot of people use these same progressions what's interesting before the trial he goes if i'm found guilty in this i'm i quit he's quitting yeah he's like i'm out because it takes the inspiration away and yeah. I, I was critical about this too because i thought it sounds so yeah alive, you were a hater but no no but i was just like you no, know you played it first i remember yeah. yeah but i mean yeah anyways he won so that's beautiful that's great he was a judge on american idol he was great yeah dude great. he's awesome. a lot of shit he dude, he got off social media because people were so mean though yeah, because they judge his looks for whatever reason. So, but whatever. And you want to talk about mental health, right? Well, that's, that's something they need Absolutely. to study. And that that's where I tell people too, like if like you don't have to have my level depression and anxiety for you to be going through gray because first of all, Instagram makes us all think our lives suck. We compare ourselves to everybody Correct. else's filtered, filtered fraction of one second. Fifteen that's seconds it. of their day. Of their and you're day. like, man, look what and he's like, doing yeah, on Monday. How come yeah. my meal doesn't work like that? Look like that. How come I don't have that car? Why am I not at that part? I feel so fucking start, left out. Yeah, FOMO right? all the time. Or, and we feel like losers. Like, man, look how great these not people are real. doing. It's not real. Or on like Twitter, like, look, we got our ass kicked in the playground growing up. That sucked for like a month. But now we see it a thousand times a second on Twitter every day. And like the human condition's not meant for that. So yeah, it's like. No, I, I, the studies on that are going to be nuts, yeah. man. Like suicide's up for a reason. Mental health yeah. is the worst it's ever been. I think it's a straight com compute contributor yeah, to social media I agree. and the more that comes out listen i'm a confident dude i I've, you know i don't suffer from depression sure i go through spells and stuff yeah. but i don't have like a clinical depression that gives yeah. me depression i was Absolutely. like i'm out i post and ghost yeah I, on twitter i might comment back here and there other than that i post and ghost it's terrible i don't man. look at anybody else's shit no. i have people calling me like what do you mean like uh i was talking to stefano the other day i'm like what are you up to man he's like oh dude i just played the beacon he's, i sold out i'm like how would i know that he's like, yeah Social media, I'm like, I'm not on. I, I yeah. don't look at it like you do, man. So I like, hired someone. I call them like, do? tell me, tell me what you're doing. Yeah. Like, don't make, don't assume I know because of social media. Yeah. And just because we're successful, don't mean our feelings don't fucking hurt. Yeah. Like my man. wallet is not an antidepressant. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. They, there's right. this idea that because you're a quote unquote celebrity, right. that You, you, you're fair game, and you don't. Hell no. Anything. I'm more emotional than most, which got me where I'm I more am. sensitive. Right. Way Absolutely. More. Yes. Yeah. No, it's fucking terrible, exactly man. Right. Also, I don't know how your life, your life. I think to be successful at anything your life is a lot of times less than glamorous if people can see what life is really like on a movie set 
I yeah. like the amount of work. hurry up and wait and shit. Well, and you're also yeah. just sitting there eating. It, like you're there are sixteen hour days yeah. all day, and you're on some roof somewhere eating from plate. But, paper but, but even your job, like matter. when like they see you, you know, break this big news story right. and then it felt like massive news story. They just see that. Yeah. Like you have no idea. He was up all, all night. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Searching Every for night. leads. Yeah. Constant, calling, constant, calling. Constant. Like no one's filming yeah. that. No. And you, know, you want to do you this when you don't yeah, have something. Bro. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that, the, the other thing. No one wants to talk about the highs and yeah. lows you go through. Yeah, yeah, I was talking to somebody. He's like, yeah, man, uh, movie stars, they live that. You know, you got that fucking everybody. They're doing parties all the time. I go, do you ever been around real actors who are working? Talk to people who have to wake up at five in the morning right. every day. It's just all work. It's it, it'd be nice. for hours. It's, it's fucking yeah. all work. And even all getting work. there, the rejection you'll have to go through. <laughs> Over and over and over and over and over and over. They don't show any of People don't know that. I said seven, mine took 11 I years. seven yeses, yeah, yeah. Right. In, in, in 25 years. Seven now, yeses. They were good seven. That's a lot of fucking rejection. But for, but for yeah. real. But that's acting. That's seven acting. good yeses. Right. That's I, what you I, 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 somebody, I swear yeah. to God, somebody said, I was doing this thing, I said, um, can you tell us about success? It was time I was doing the Goldbergs or I was doing school or whatever. And they said, can you tell us, uh, like, how do you become successful? And I said, successful? At, so I'm, I'm, I'm 50. I was 53 at the time. I go, all right, here's what you do. You sit in traffic for your 20s and 30s, and even a lot of your 40s hearing the word no, right. and then you'll get seven yeses and just hold and on. That's all to you're them. doing. That's yeah. all. We'll talk to Michael. So like, <clears throat> no one's was following his career the first four years. Right, right, right. Like, I would love to see Michael then. Yeah. So like, that was, that's the that was story. a great experience. That was a great experience, too. Yeah, and you saw it firsthand. And, and, I was, and then it was... Um, all of a sudden, boom, he gets you know 15 sacks and gets a contract. It's on TV. And he and I used to go to the same fucking places every single night for, for, for those five years, the first five years. And all of a sudden, all those people who were sitting there were all coming to our table, offering them jeans company after jeans company, record label after record label. Somebody offered them ostrich farm to invest in, Sick. strawberry pick and feel. Everybody has the next Napster back then yeah. or the next MySpace and this and that. And I, I'd be the no guy. I'd sit there and I'd go, hey man, this look like our office to you. You've been sitting there for four years, haven't said shit. And all of a sudden you see him get paid on TV. Yeah. Now you're trying to get his money. You got to go. And we'd have this good cop, bad cop thing. And then I had the same thing with Chuck and Randy made it, you know, known them before they made it all of a sudden same thing happened yep. or the Rashad or all those people all of a sudden nope everybody's trying You're to a good friend run to your table like yeah they really tell you drink laser, man. <clears throat> damn right and they all tell you I tell everybody don't invest shit just use your name and get mail money and everybody had the same line get mail money what do you mean like let them send you money in a mail for using your name and likeness yeah. Yeah. but if you don't, don't invest it, your own money you can't lose it you yeah go. so everybody have the same thing they say listen we're going to give you two percent of this but if you give us 500 grand, we'll give you 10%. Imagine if you had 10% of Facebook instead of 2%, and I'd be like, good with 2%, bro. Yeah. Yeah, we're okay. No risk. Yeah. yeah. And that's where guys get in trouble. Mm, they, 100%. They, it, it's funny because athletes want to be businessmen and businessmen want to be athletes. So they all want to kind of get their athletes around them. So it was a really good experience for me to have. And then yeah, that's cool. I was able to kind of live up myself. Somewhat. I've never invested in a, a thing really. Yeah. Well, the first question I asked those guys would be, how much of your money do you have in this? Yes. Awesome yeah, 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 yeah. Right. How much? Can I see that? Right, Please. right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. Five hundred grand. Do you have? Do you have five hundred grand? Have your own. Right? Your money. Yeah. You fucking asshole. <laughs> what else you got, Jim? All right. This is pretty scary. MLB. Have you seen this uh, pitcher get hit in the head with a ninety-two point seven? Yeah, ninety-two point seven mile per hour. Do we want to see it? Yeah, I'd love to see it. <laughs> Good Play real quick. Bam. Oh! oh! It was so terrifying. <laughs> He was able to walk off the field, but he did suffer a fracture. That's oh, how that it hit him, damn, damn. unfortunately. Fractured skull? Fractured skull, like a small <laughs> fracture in the skull, and Ooh. obviously a concussion. Damn. But 92 mile power, that's You insane. can die that way. He looked all right, though. Yeah, yeah, he was able to walk off. Wow. We're concerned about those terrible Rockies jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> He's walking off there. But, I mean, damn. you know, who knows how much damage it's going to be yeah. later on. So. Yeesh. Jeez, I hate that. Oh, and they put him on the injured list for, like, 15 days, which I thought was kind of small. Short, but I don't know. You're probably all right. All right. Um, should we do this one? Let's do this one. Okay, so Brian, I remember you mentioned this last week, I think, about a hotel manager who <laughs> snuck into someone's room and sucked their toes like at 5 a.m. Yeah. Another dude, too. I don't, I don't know why that's weird, but did he drug him? It's before? so weird. You don't know why nope. it's weird? No, nope. apparently I'm kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> apparently, apparently he didn't. Apparently he just came in, robbed him, and then hotel sucked manager charged after a lady sucking on Stephen Guest's toes. Yeah. And then I'll show Rob you some sort of not there. What do you mean? Here, that's of. the guy that sucked toes. Oh, he looks, looks like, like a toe, toe sucker. sucker. Yeah. He definitely does. Yeah. <laughs> looks like a toe sucker. <laughs> <laughs> amongst other things, fifty-two. Yeah. 
Yeah. So wow. the guy now is suffering from the uh, the guy that got his toes sucked is suffering from PTSD and suing this guy. <laughs> that would be terrifying. Post though. toes also sucking. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> clearly gay man. Yeah. So this. <laughs> Jordan. Hell yeah, Leah Bryan. Yeah, fans kept on sending this in and saying, <laughs> "I'm sorry, Brian." <laughs> well, that's, is that spray paint? This yeah, is when you know. Like, this is when you know what you look like in real life. <laughs> you're like, people are saying man. it looks like Brian for some reason. Great, a little <laughs> bit. Great. Wait, they spray paint his eyebrows and beard? Yeah, sure. I've worn that. <laughs> I've done that. All right. If you this one, in. Cheeto Vera sent in. I love Cheeto. Cheeto. Cheeto said, "There's hope for Brian." Yeah, I love that motherfucker. <laughs> look, Cheeto's so. Yes, yeah, so they're all like. There you go, bro. No bad hit. Dude, oh, that guy's here is terrible. What? Look at him. Look this at him. He's great. I want to play the music, but I can't. <laughs> B, I think you either got to do that or look, look at Jay. He just decided to yeah, shave right. it. Jay's, Jay's oh, this wasn't my choice. Bro, those are, those those are God's choice. Oh, no. Oh, no. God, God's <laughs> Look at this guy. Got, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Look at this guy. Great body. Oh, no. Oh, oh sick. Oh, there you go. That <laughs> looks natural. That's a terrible wig. Yeah, that's terrible. He owns the Patriots. Oh, <laughs> oh that dude. Um, I don't know what else. Oh, this okay. So a lot of people tagged us in this as well. They thought Brian would like well, this girl. I'm, I'm, I'm into her. <clears throat> so she gets Jacked. what seven figures? Something so like that. It's her, it's her face. She's so pretty. Yeah. She's a little too jacked. Really, Brian? Oh, yeah. geez. that's a little much for me. So I went to her Instagram. Wait. She's too much testosterone. She, <coughs> not, they call her the, the Kendall Jenner on steroids. Her name is yeah. Vlad De Salva Galligan. Yeah, but this is her hmm. Instagram. She, yeah, I'm not into the steroid thing. I like a muscular woman, yeah. but now that's that's I'm a fan of. But that's <laughs> too big in the arms, and she's just yeah, dude. Like, yeah, I know she is. I've seen her. You do? Yeah, <laughs> she's Brazilian. <laughs> is she Brazilian? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. There she. That is. name's not very Brazilian, B. Yeah, but she is though. But uh, yeah, people thought you might. Boy, enjoy she that. is Jack. She's yeah, Jack. Calen style all day. Well, I'm gay, so obviously. <laughs> um. Okay, oh, so this is the, yeah. Man. How about this dumbass? Yeah. What NBA happened? dumb boy. So this is the second time he had a, a yeah. Instagram live or whatever and showing a gun, and now he could potentially be suspended you for a long time. You gotta fire your friends, time. too. That's my, my, that's yeah, my whole fire thing. Your friends. Like, yeah. Yeah, his friends who are putting mm -hmm. this on Instagram yeah, live, if he's gonna carry a gun around, the policy should be no social media. Like, if I'm in the car, no. why would his friend post this? But after you got suspended, mm -hmm. why would you ever I know. pull that up in a car? And he went through all, all the all protocols and all the, the suspensions. No so he's he's losing tons yeah, of money because yeah. he's an all pro. They help. didn't vote him all pro because of this outside the <laughs> he needs some help. the field. It's it's nuts. Yeah. So now he's gonna be suspended. Oh, who knows how long? Yeah. You Major suspension. Suspension. Bill, Bill, Burr, Bill Burr has an old he's like, been controversial right? joke about this. Where did they like, suspend him already? Yeah. You ever hear Bill Burr's joke about this? Like they're paraphrasing it. He'd be like. A lot of these black athletes need a white friend so that you can be like, hey, dude, you know you got a gun slide in the back seat there. <laughs> yeah, you want to put that away. <laughs> Bill, Bill. But yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. But what his buddy's like, you know if this gets out, he's yeah. screwed, man. His buddy just wants clout, probably, so yeah. whatever. Well, that's not your buddy. Then. No, yeah, Fire your friends. Yeah, fire your friends. Fuck that's his problem. His friends. It's like, come on, guys. Seriously. Well, him too. He can't be pulling up a gun. What yeah. are you, you thinking, take, man? You take responsibility for your And also, if, you know, whatever he makes, $300 million a year, could you, if you're worried about guns and stuff, could you not hire security? Well, hold on. What's going on here? <laughs> so apparently Kanye West uh, did a trademark for, they're called uh, Yeezy sock he's, he's dressed, shoes. Yeah, he's well, dressed Well, no, those like, are rash guards. Yeah, that, yeah. That's not Yeezy because that's an elite what? logo. Yeah. Those are straight up. That, I mean, these are the pictures that came out. Those are Muay Thai, thai Shingo. Yeah, that, yeah, that's all it is. Because there's a lead on it. That's hilarious. Yeah. He's right. wearing Muay Thai shoes. <laughs> right. So it says a lead on it. I didn't dude. realize that. Yeah. You just spray paint black over it. Oh, my God, that's it. Those are straight up. Shin guards He's for Muay Thai. Shin guards. And who's this gal? That's his wife. That's a new girl. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's cool. She's hot. <laughs> but the, man. Yeezy Fair Tech's coming soon, I guess. If you're a fan of Yeezy, do you copy this style? It's just. <laughs> this is his old. This is in 2019. Another version of like the sock shoes. Yeah, it's, but I mean, like if you walk in, we're going to get. sock shoes. Those were shin guards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were. Yeah, and those are gi pants. Well, you can check. Yeah. Yeah. All he's doing is stealing from the. Yeah. Isn't it weird, man? Yeah, that's him though. Easy yeah. sock shoes. Let's see if it picks up at all. So. Huh? Yeah, those are. That's pretty is much it. Lead, is it lead a? Uh, yeah, that's a brand. Mm. <laughs> so he's wearing a real. 
That's Muay Thai shin trying guards. Trying to say it's his fashion. Those are, <laughs> those that are, shit is hilarious. Yeah, those are legit. That is I Muay Thai know. shin guards, dude. Elite so I, I mean, go buy those right now. Hilarious. Yeah. I mean, why not the, why not the Tiger wrestling shoes oh while you're at it? Oh, my God. Well, maybe he's wearing the elites, oh. but they're just saying in the article he's trademarking the suit, sh sock oh shoes, God, and maybe this is the only picture they had. But show. he is wearing shin guards out in public. Yeah. yeah like and that's the kind of shirt you wear when you wrestle and you have to they lose water weight. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's the kind of shirt you wear when you're in high yes. school and you have to lose yeah, weight. Lose water water weight. Fighters dress like this all the time. Maybe he's fighting. We don't know practice. about it. Yeah, yeah, maybe he's fighting. He just left practice. We don't know. Fitting in a cup trying to lose <laughs> yeah. weight. What a character. <laughs> what an absolute character. <laughs> who is the? Who is his wife? She's a... Um, she used to be head of... Uh, she's a fashion... Yeah, right. Something, yeah. 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 And she looks like... When she had long hair, black hair, she did look like Kim Kardashian. I like her hair like that. Mm -hmm. Is that it, Chin? That's it. Jay Glazer. Jay Glazer. Go buy his sharing, book, brother. Unbreakable. Thank you, brother. Yeah, man. Mental yeah. health. I'm going to read it. Thank you. Podcast. Podcast, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, What's go. the podcast? Unbreakable. unbreakable. It's called Unbreakable Mental Health Podcast. Awesome. Freddie. Yep. Freddie Prince yeah, I really appreciate you coming on and talking Our that boy way. boy, Freddie Prince Jr. is yeah. coming on. This week, We yeah. absolutely love him, man. That's cool, awesome. man. I appreciate it, man. Man, it's good to see you guys. I know, brother. It's been, been a long, long. time. Yeah. I, get to, I get to hit you up Way when I'm in Malibu. I'm yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. 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 Same number. Same number? Yeah. Same I got number. it. Right. I can't ever change my number because, yeah. like, I've gotten stories from guys like 10 years later. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, trying to give you a scoop and stuff. Yeah. You just can't change your number. Yeah. I used to have two phones because I thought the Patriots and the league were trying to. When I had the uh, <laughs> Spy Game video, yeah. I thought they were. Uh, they were tapping my phone. Did you break the spike? Yeah, I had the. I still still have it. Before we go, can I just ask one question? Yeah. Is Tom Brady really getting in the stand-up? I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, I don't know if that's real. Okay. See that? I heard yeah. that from more than two I people. I can't see that. Really? Either can I? But they I said he's, they that. said he's turning down the Fox deal to get in the stand-up. Like I, he's a uh, smart guy. I don't think you don't so. have to. Okay. You don't have to turn down Fox to get in stand-up. Yeah, you, know, you can do it at night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also. Monday through Saturday. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> it doesn't make those headlines don't make sense. Yeah, it's all bullshit. No, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I just I, like, I can't. Maybe he'll try it, but he's not going to turn down the. He actually he opened up TB12 in in our gym on Unbreakable, so we're doing his uh, his oh, rehab cool. there. Yeah, wow. it's cool. Yeah, because he's, he's trying to buy into the Raiders, right? A minority yeah, yeah, yeah. owner. That that TB12 dude, I tore my labrum. Alden Smith, who I trained to I come him. back in the NFL, yeah. and uh, man, he tore my labrum and kept training him, kept training him like a dumbass. And they just cut it out, and they they went in for surgery. They cut out the labrum, and they they didn't reattach. And it was the MRI didn't show it, so like they went in for a scope, and they ended up being a three and a half hour surgery two Jeez. days before start of the season, kind of be on TV. And so the doc's like, "Look, you're not going to be able to throw a ball anymore or do any military press." And I had to go out and throw out the first pitch of the uh, Diamondbacks game. Four pitches in, I was like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> He was right. Like, this shit just sublexed out. Jesus. It was awful. And I was like, man, I started to throw the pitch. And I was like, man, just don't bounce it. I don't want to be Sir Bounce a lot. And it was fucking terrible. And I went down to Tampa and Alex Guerrero, his guy, he's like, I'm not going to lie to you. This is going to hurt. Put it back in and then worked on it. And it's been great ever since. Oh, damn. I haven't thrown a ball or done a military press since, but... That shit was no what joke to him, man. <laughs> like, like, you know, I, I'm sure you're the same way. I don't really listen to doctors much. No, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, they don't know what they're yeah, talking about. Yeah, I don't know what they're talking about. I'm different. Yeah, I'm, I'm different. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. different. How, you think they paid attention to med school? Come yeah, on, please. Come on, is Alden Smith still playing in the NFL? He's in jail right now. He is. Yeah, so he, he just... Uh, Again? I, yeah, I love the dude, though, man. So listen, much talent. A guy like that, too, and a lot of these guys, he just, they don't think they're worthy of the success. Ah, so they sabotage They sabotage because they're like, I'm going to fuck it up anyway, which is what a lot of us do. I'm going to fuck it up anyway, so I'm going to speed up the process. And That's a shame I love the him. guy. He's Big, so great talented. Great heart. Such love him, dude. He's part of my charity. He's just everything. He's just fucking great, dude. He's, he's great. How long? He was in. <laughs> he was out for four years. I met him. He was homeless and trained him, got him back, got him back, signed to the Cowboys and um, was kicking ass for a while and then kind of fell off the wagon. But, yeah. That's such a shame. Yeah. I, man, I believe in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth chance. Especially a talent like that. Yeah. yeah. But it also is hard. He's like, a good person. He wasn't trying to play in the league again. He was just wanted a place to go give him a team again, transition. Well, he was living sober living when I met him. So he was homeless and living sober living. And then um, he just fit the gym great. He was great. He was, he was humble as shit with everybody. Loved him, man. I still love him. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a bummer. I love that you said that. You believe in fifth, sixth, seventh Absolutely. chances. Absolutely. You're a good fucking dude. People give me a billion, dude. I've, I've had a lot of issues and meltdowns and stuff, and it's hard to be Jay Glazer's friend sometimes. So, I'm, 
with, with you know what, Jay? You're man, 53, so. man. Yep. You're you're by far a much you're a great person back then, but you know, you're a much better person at 53. Thank you, brother. And Appreciate and uh, and I think that's the that's the goal Thank to you. evolve into a much better person. Yeah, you, and a truthful you know person. we love you, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah, Go buy his book, Unbreakable. You, baby, I'll see you in Malibu, Appreciate brother. Jake Glazer. Yeah. I'm moving in. <laughs> you can be my Kato Kalen. <laughs> <laughs>